Have a seat, please. We now resume to hear the respondents' witnesses' testimony. So, are you ready? Thank you, Honorable uh, Judge. Yes, we are ready, uh, and we pray that the, the witness be called from Rita. Uh, we intend to have... <coughs> uh, the respondent intends to call three witnesses, and we will start with the first one from Rita, uh, by the name of Stabua. So if... Uh, she can be kindly called to appear before the court for purposes of testimony. Uh, honorable judges, just before we uh, just before we proceed to uh, call our witnesses, uh, we had reservations uh, regarding the, the the two documents which were attended just before we went uh, for a short break. Uh, the first one was a, a copy of the travel emergency travel document, which was um, produced by the applicant. Uh, by the by, the council for the applicant or the applicant, and it is our submission that uh, that particular document uh, forms uh, the history of that emergency travel document forms part uh, of the cases which were determined in the municipal courts, uh, especially uh, in the High Court of Tanzania. Uh, if you look at the judgment of the High Court of Tanzania. Uh, you will realize that there's a point where uh, the applicant was supposed to produce that document uh, before the High Court, but he decided to tear it. And actually that's one of the reasons that he was prosecuted uh, for court contempt. And he was the one or is the one who was holding an original copy of the emergency travel document. So it's not easy now for us to ascertain just by looking at the copy of the emergency travel document that indeed it's one of the documents that was issued by the uh, Ministry of Home Affairs. And we pray that it be rejected um, outright because the original copy that was supposed to be produced by the applicant is not here in court. It was torn before the high court. And we also uh, invite you to go through the judgment where you will be able to relate what I am saying now. Uh, the second document was a copy of the birth certificate um, alleged to be uh, owned by the alleged mother of the applicant who is now in court. Uh, we have, with regard to that document, we have an officer from Rita, uh, which is an agency to do with issues of birth and death who will be able to look at the document because um, it wasn't easy for us here. She's one of the witnesses. It wasn't easy for us here to quickly look at the document and be able to 
verify its authenticity. So now um, our witness will be come uh, to, uh, to, te to testify and she, we pray that she also be allowed to look at the document for purposes of uh, authenticating it, um, for purposes of ascertaining its authenticity because she's the one working in that particular, uh, in the appropriate authority to do with those certificates. So she will be able to tell if indeed that copy is also a valid one. So we pray for those two uh, things to be done before we proceed uh, to give our testimony. Yes, Council of Applicant. May it please you, uh, Honorable President. This is okay. Oh. <laughs> May it please you, Honorable President and uh, Honorable Justices. Okay. Um, I'm, uh, I'm amazed with the submission from the Respondent Council. First of all, he hasn't moved the court that the current submission he was, sub she was submitting is uh, allowed under which rules. But secondly, it has been taken by event because she should have uh, objected right away when we were tendering. So I expect that what she has submitted is out of record. She just submitted as a story because after all, the, 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 the applicant's party has been already closed. So she, they are starting their part. And what she has submitted, she cannot go into the record of their part. So the court should not entertain such a, a submission because this is a honorable court, it's not a political meeting. Thank you. You want to respond? Uh, yes, thank you. Honorable judges, you will recall that uh, that particular document was not even tendered by the applicant for purposes of it to be um, accepted by the court as part of his evidence. Those documents came at the instance of the court when they said that they are holding a pa uh, the applicant has a passport. And then the court posed the question. Uh, the court actually asked for a copy of the passport. It is when that a particular uh, copy of the emergency travel document came up. So it came at the instance of the court. It, it didn't come at the instance. So it shouldn't be allowed at this stage to form part of their records. It didn't come at their own instances, but it came at the instance of the court when they claimed that they are holding a copy, that the applicant has a copy of the passport. In any case, we are leaving it for the court to rule on that because it came from the tape, from the bench. Thank you, Honorable Judge. If I may also add on that, it's not even in the list. Uh, it's not even um, in the list of the copies which were submitted to us. So we've just been taken by surprise, if we may say.
Okay, the court would like to get the original of all the copies and uh, deal with it uh, as a whole. Sorry if you can come again. I say we want to see the original of the of all documents. The original, is in, the original was in the hands of the applicant. It was torn in court before the mm. High Court. So what's available now for the case of the emergency travel document is mm. just a copy that was uh, provided or produced by the applicant. He tore the original copy before the High Court. So it's uh, not easy, yes. The Unless original are... copy is... Yes, it was in the hands of the applicant and it's already torn. Yeah. So perhaps if we could be given time to go back to the office, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, to cross-check whether the, the leave, uh, they call them leave, leave uh, the second and third leave, mm -hmm. because the original is given is normally given to the um, applicant or whoever, the intended applicant, and then there are some copies mm -hmm. left, but not the original ones. They call them second and third. Mm -hmm. I think the person from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs can testify to that. So unless uh, you have that copy, uh, take it back to the office and be able to compare it with whatever that you have, then you can be able to say this is, a, this is indeed a document by the government or not by the government. Especially that we have been taken by surprise. Yeah. Yeah, um, <clears throat> this court uh, allowed the respondent state this morning to submit a bunch of documents uh, for the first time which were not known to the other party. So the court allowed that. And the reason we allowed is for the interest of justice. We, we need to get at the truth. Uh, so we, on this particular documents, we feel as a court that we should allow these documents to be part of the evidence. However, we are going to allow all the parties, including the respondent state, to make submissions on these documents. In other words, the documents will be among the documents that the court will look at, but all the parties, the respondent state, will be allowed to go and check as it wishes and make written submissions, which we'll then consider when we look at those documents. But I think for the court now to say we are shutting out these documents may uh, uh, present a challenge. So I think that's the way we, we're thinking we can proceed. Okay, the decision is that the uh, originals of uh, all documents should be tendered as evidence. Thank you. Can proceed. Need for both parties. Even yeah, okay. Certificate, birth certificate, passport, everything. Yes, yes. In this application, uh, to go on with the our witness, the next witness, we are going to use our national language, which is Kiswahili.
ushahidi naomba ieleze mahakama jina lako ni nani na unafanya kazi gani Naitwa Stabward ni afisa usajili ninafanya kazi rita wakala wa usajili ufilisi na udhamini na moja ya kazi yake ni kutoa vyeti vya kuzaliwa Hebu ieleze mahakama hii utaratibu wa kutoa vyeti vya kuzaliwa hapo rita ukoje Utaratibu wa kutoa vyeti unategemea na mwombaji kama mwombaji ni mtoto ambaye amezaliwa ndani ya miezi mitatu basi anakuja moja kwa moja na matangazo kutoka hospitali alozaliwa lakini kama mwombaji ni mtu mzima tunaita late registration kuna fomu anatakiwa ajaze ambatanishe na vielelezo vinavyoonyesha mahali alipozaliwa ni vielelezo gani hizo ambavyo anatakiwa aviwasilishe anaweza kuleta vielelezo kati ya vifuatavyo uh, kadi yake ya ubatizo kama ni Mkristo wakati anabatizwa kuna kadi inatolewa anaweza kuleta kadi ya kupigia kura kama ameshafika miaka 18 analeta kadi ya kupigia kura pamoja na kitambulisho cha utaifa anaweza kuleta cheti cha kumaliza elimu ya msingi na kama hana kabisa anatakiwa arudi kule kijijini alipozaliwa ataandikiwa barua kutoka katika ofisi ya afisa mtendaji wa mahali alipozaliwa alafu ataziwasilisha kwetu pamoja na kujaza fomu ya maombi na kulipa ada inayotakikana ndipo anapoanza taratibu za kupata cheti kwa kawaida ni nani ambaye anastahili kusaini kwenye hicho cheti cha kuzaliwa kwa mtu ambaye anaomba kutoka wilayani msajili aliyoko katika wilaya husika ndio anayesaini katika cheti kinachotolewa katika hiyo wilaya. Na kwa upande wa Rita makao makuu mnapataje taarifa za usajili kutoka kwenye wilaya? Uh, kwenye sheria yetu ya vizazi na vifo inaelezea kila baada ya miezi mi, mi, nne mitatu inatakiwa iletwe taarifa kutoka wilayani kuja pale makao makuu lakini kwa kuwa usajili katika nchi yetu hauko kwa haraka sana na zile register zetu zinachukua vizazi yani entry mpaka tatu kwa hiyo kila entry inapojaa inatakiwa iwasilishwe makao makuu kwa ajili ya kuwekwa records vizuri je hapo ofisini kwenu lita ili swala la Robert John Penisi silivifikaje? Ah mwaka 2016 tulipokea barua kutoka kwa ah nadhani ni John Pantelakis akio na wenzake akiomba kujua ku, akiulizia cheti ambacho alikiambatanisha. Kwa hiyo kama ofisi baada ya kukipokea kile cheti tulikiangalia kwa kupitia kumbukumbu kumbu zetu ambazo zinaonyesha kile cheti kilikuwa kimetoka Muleba. Kwa hiyo tukaangalia kwenye kumbukumbu kumbu zetu na tukaweza kuijibu barua hiyo kwa kuambia kwamba hicho cheti chenye hiyo namba entry ya namba 12 na 4 haipo katika kumbukumbu kumbu zetu. Hicho uh-huh. cheti kilikuwa na, na, na jina gani? Kilikuwa na jina la John Robert. Kwa hiyo unasema baada ya kufanya uchunguzi mlibaini nini? Tulibaini iko cheti hakipo hakikuwa cheti sahihi kutoka katika mamlaka yetu. Vitu gani visababisha mubaini hivyo kwamba hicho cheti hakikuwa sahihi kutoka kwenye mamlaka yenu? Kile cheti kilikuwa kinaonyesha kimetoka wilaya ya Muleba ambapo entry namba yake ilikuwa inaonyesha ni namba 1012 na, na kimetolewa tarehe 16 mwezi wa 5 mwaka 96. Sasa kwenye kumbukumbu kumbu zetu za Muleba tarehe 16 mwezi wa 5 mwaka 96 entry number zilikuwa ndio kwanza 1300 na 60 na kuendelea. Yaani bado tulikuwa kwenye namba 1300 na 60. Lakini entry number ya hicho cheti kilichoulizwa kwetu kilikuwa kina entry number ya 1200 na 4. Kwa hiyo ni entry number ambayo iko mbele sana hata sidhani hata Muleba mpaka sasa kama wamefika. Hicho cheti kilikuwa kimesainiwa na nani? Kingine pia hicho cheti kilikuwa kinaonyesha kimesainiwa 
kime, kime, kime toka kwenye wilaya ambacho msajili anaonyesha ni magimbi lakini signature inayoonekana sio ya hiyo msajili halafu pia kwa sababu kilikuwa kimetoka Muleba na wakati huo msajili wa Muleba alikuwa sio magimbi kwa hiyo kilipaswa kisainiwe na msajili wa Muleba kwa wakati huo bwana Atala magimbi alikuwa ofisi gani kwa wakati huo magimbi alikuwa ni msajili lakini alikuwa buko bangini Kwa hiyo baada ya kubaini mapungufu hayo mlimweleza mli ambaye alikuwa ameleta hiyo uh, barua. Ndiyo tulimweleza kwa kuijibu barua yake kwa maandishi. Na baada hapo je mlichukua hatua zote dhidi ya huyo mtu ambaye cheti chake kwa kinaonyesha kwamba alikutoka kwenye mamlaka sahihi. Tulikifuatilia kule muleba kilipotolewa na baada ya kuulizia kwa msajili wetu kufuatilia kwenye vyombo vingine vya usalama tuligundua kwamba huyo mtu ambaye mwenye hicho cheti tayari alishafunguliwa mashtaka na alihukumiwa alikuwa tayari yuko prison anasubiri kupelekwa kwao. Kwa hiyo ile taratibu yetu ya kutaka kumshtaki ilikuwa bado haijakamilika. Hebu ieleze mahakama kuna uhusiano gani kati ya cheti cha kuzalia na uraia wa mtu? Uh, kiufupi hamna uhusiano kati ya cheti cha kuzaliwa na uraia. Sheria yetu ya vizazi iko wazi. Na kwa wale ambao wana vyeti wamevipata miaka ya karibuni wanaona chini kabisa tumeandika unapopata hichi cheti sio uthibitisho kwamba wewe ni raia wa Tanzania. Kupata cheti cha kuzaliwa kinathibitisha huyu aliyeandikwa alie kama mtoto katika hicho cheti amezaliwa katika teritori ya Tanzania. Kwa hiyo kama ni Tanzania akiwa ni mchina ili mradi tu kizazi kimetokea nchi hii basi lazima ataandikishwa kama kizazi kimetokea Tanzania. Je, yeah, kwenye kumbukumbu zenu au register yenu ya vyeti vya kuzaliwa hicho cheti ni miongoni mwa vyeti ambao vipo vinatambulika? Hapana. Hakipo kwenye kumbukumbu zetu hakipo kwenye mamlaka yetu yani ni kama tu mtu ana karatasi tu ambalo anaamua kulitumia lakini halipo kwenye yani haikipo kwenye ofisi yetu kwa kwa, kwa misingi hiyo unaeleza una, 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 unaweza kuelezaje mahakama kuhusiana na hicho cheti uh, cha kueleza mahakama kwamba hicho sio cheti cha kuzaliwa ni karatasi tu mtu usijui amejitoa wapi ambalo haijatoka kwenye mamlaka yetu kama ni cheti cha kuzaliwa Tanzania lazima kitoke kwenye ofisi ya Rita na kinapotoka katika ofisi ya Rita lazima kiwe na entry number na kiwe katika kumbukumbu kumbu yetu Sala la mwisho shahidi hebu ieleze mahakama kwa mujibu wa sheria za Tanzania kuna ukomo wa mtu kushtakiwa kwenye makosa ya jinai ukomo wa muda Hapana kwenye sheria zetu za Tanzania kwenye masuala ya jinai hakuna ukomo hata kama mtu utakimbia miaka 20 lakini siku mamlaka usike kikukamata inakupeleka na inakufungulia mashtaka. Asante sana shahidi. Nashukuru mahakama nimemaliza ushahidi wangu. Council for applicant Shahidi. Mm. Eh, kwanza eleza mahakama briefly elimu yako. Cha mwisho elimu ya mwisho kubwa. Elimu ya mwisho. Ah uh, nina postgraduate diploma ya sheria kwa vitendo. Kwa vitendo. Sawa. Shahidi ulisema eh, applicant ali apply cheti ali apply cheti cha mwaka gani? Uh, kwenye hicho cheti 2016 kweli si kweli hapana si kusema hivyo ulisema mwaka gani kwenye cheti kilichoambatanishwa sio cheti kilichoambatanishwa ali apply mwaka gani yeye yeah, ali apply mwaka 96 ali apply mwaka 96 shahidi vyeti vya kuzaliwa vya Tanzania hebu describe ziwa zimeandikwaje 
cheti cha kuzalia cha Tanzania kina entries ambayo juu tutakuwa na namba ya ingizo la cheti kitafuatia sehemu alipozaliwa mtoto uh, kula mingine itafuatia jina la majina ya mtoto itafuatia majina ya baba wa mtoto kazi yake na mahali anapoishi na vya zamani vilikuwa pia vinaingiza mpaka uraia kwa hiyo zitaenda kola mzikitaja particulars mpaka za wazazi wa mtoto mpaka tarehe aliyozaliwa na tarehe na mwezi na mwaka wa cheti kilichotolewa unakubaliana na mimi kwamba heading imeandikwa United Republic of Tanzania namba ni wewe hapa wewe jibu tu maswali wewe si shahidi Uh, Honorable President, I want uh, the, the witness to answer because she wants at Rita. I want to answer without referring the, referring to anything unless if the council ask you for the reference uh, for the question. Um, Tanzania. Jew. Kimeandikwa United Republic of Tanzania ama Jamhuri ya Muungano wa Tanzania? Inategemea kimetoka mwaka gani. Kama kimetoka mwaka tayari imeshakuwa United Republic of Tanzania, juu kinaandikwa the United Republic of Tanzania. Lakini kama kilitoka kabla ya uhuru kinakuwa na cheti chako cha kuzaliwa imeandikwaje? United Republic of Tanzania au imeandikwaje? United Republic of Tanzania. Very good. Kuna sehemu yoyote kwenye cheti chako kilichoandikwa Rita issued by Rita imetolewa na Rita Yes or no Kwa cheti changu hapana Objection my lord Yes um, thank you Mr President honorable judges um counsel for the applicant is asking our witness uh questions relating to her own birth certificate um, kindly, if you could um, address the issue at hand. It's our prayer. Uh, Honorable President, for the justice who are coming from the common law countries, you know very well that cross examinations has got no limit. The sky is a limit. You can ask any kind of question just to certain the evidence. So the objection, and they are also my sister, has an ample time to re-examine. Proceed. Unakubaliana na nini shahidi ukiondoa vieti vilivyo toka kabla ya uhuru eh, baada ya uhuru na baada ya jamuhuri mwaka stina mbili yote hakuna hata moja ilio andikwa ishu bairita Vipo ambayo vimeandikwa issued by Rita. Kuanzia mwaka gani? Kuanzia mwaka Rita ilipoundwa. Una mfano wa hicho cheti kilichoandikwa issued by Rita? Hapa mimi sina. Shahidi ukiwa witness muhimu sana kutoka institution kama Rita, hukuona umuhimu kuleta ikielelezo kama hicho. Hukuona. Hukuona. So, I proceed. Shahidi, uli yambia makama eh, labda kaniweke ibisa. Mleba, ama songea mfano. Kuna registry ya kuishu birth certificate songea? Ndiyo. Ni kweli kwamba registra alioko songea anaweza kusign cheti ya kuzaliwa huko huko? Ni kweli. 
ni kweli pia kwamba kuna registry ya kusign vieti vya kuzaliwa Bukoba au Kagera mkoa wa Kagera katika kila wilaya katika kila wilaya kwa maana hiyo shahidi si lazima kwa applicant kutuma application yake Dar es Salaam sio lazima sio lazima kwa hiyo nikikuweke nikisema kwamba uliposema kwamba ameleta application Dar es Salaam kwa ajili ya cheti cha kuzaliwa utakuwa umedanganya mahakama sikusema hivyo nilisema kilicholetwa Dar es Salaam ni barua ya kuulizia cheti kilichotoka Muleba Shahidi Je ni kawaida mtu amba, ambaye ana cheti chake kuulizia tena cheti chake cha kuzaliwa Ni kawaida Ni kawaida Shahidi hebu tuambie huyu John Pentalasis ni nani? Mimi simfahamu. Na huyo John Pentalasis ndiye aliyeandika barua kuulizia cheti. Kweli si kweli? Ni kweli. Na sio Robert John Penesses. Kweli si kweli? Ni kweli. Kwa hiyo mtu unayetoa ushahidi ku kwamba aliomba cheti Dar es Salaam kupata clarification ya cheti chake Dar es Salaam ni mtu ambaye hausiki kwenye hii kesi hapa Ni kweli si kweli? Ni kweli ndio. Hausiki. Shahidi umesema pia application ya kuomba cheti cha kuzaliwa lazima upeleke na cheti ya ubatizo. Hapana, hiyo ni moja ya vitu vya kupeleka. Ni, ni moja ya. Je, Robert John Penses alishawahi kuandika barua ya kuomba ku clarify cheti chake? Alishawahi kuomba akuandika sijaona yeye hajawahi kuomba shahidi uliambia mahakama kwamba ulimwandikia mtu aliyeuliza hicho cheti barua ya kuambia kwamba hiki hiki cheti hakipo unakumbuka kusema hivyo nakumbuka hiyo barua umeileta hapa mahakamani ndio wakili wako aliyokuwa anakuongoza ali submit aliomba ku submit sijui aliomba sijui si ulikuepo mahakamani aliomba hakuomba sijui ukuepo kwa hiyo mahakamani we ulipeleka mbele ya registrar wa mahakama kusema kwamba hii ndio barua niliyotuma e, niliyotuma kwa hiyo John Pentalysis Kama shahidi sikuambia kwamba naweza kwenda kwa registrar sikupewa hiyo chance. Huku. Okay, ukuambia. Ulishawahi kumwona huyu mtu anaitwa John Pentalysis? Hapana. Nikisema huyo John Pentalysis ni mtu ambayo hayupo na imetengenezwa tu. Unasemaje? Una nguvu kusema kwa hiyo unakuwa umesema No further question for this witness. Okay, thank you, uh, respondent. Asante. Shahidi, kuna kuna ushahidi kwa uh, John Robert Penesis aliomba aliwahi kuomba kupatiwa cheti cha kuzaliwa 
hakuna ushahidi wa taarifa yoyote ya John Robert kuomba kupatiwa cheti cha kuzaliwa Vile vile hapa umeulizwa na wakili msomi kwamba cheti chako ukieleze je cheti chako kinahusiana vipi na kesi ambayo iko mahakamani Lakini uhusiano Je msajili wa wilaya moja ana uwezo wa kusajili cheti ambacho kime cha wilaya nyingine kwa mfano labda kwa mkoa wa Bukoba au Kagera msajili wa ngara anaweza kusaini cheti cha Biaramuro wilaya ya Biaramuro Hapana Tanzania bara yote cheti kila msajili aliyoko wilayani ndio anaisign cheti kinachotoka katika wilaya yake Na nyinyi rita makao makuu mnapataje kumbukumbu kutoka kwenye wilaya zote Tanzania kama nilivyosema hapo awali kwa sababu pale rita makao makuu ndio makao makuu ya ofisi. Kwa hiyo kila baada ya miezi mitatu ama kila baada ya ile kitabu cha kumbukumbu kujaa taarifa zake lazima kiletwe kwa msajili mkuu kiweze kuingiza katika tehama na pia kiweze katikiwekwa katika kumbukumbu kiusahihi. Kwa hiyo hizo hizo taarifa zinakuwa zinaelezea nini kutoka wilayani kuja makao makuu ya rita? Zinaelezea matukio yote ya vizazi na vifo yaliyotokea katika kila wilaya ya Tanzania bara. Uh -huh. uh, vile vile huyo mtu ambaye unasema John Peter Pantelakis aliambaye alileta ali, ali barua Rita. Kwenye hiyo barua aliambatanisha kitu gani? Aliambatanisha hicho cheti ambacho kinaitwa namba 1012 na 4. Akitaka kujua hicho cheti kama kimetoka kwetu na kama ni halali. Je, yeah. mtu ambaye amegushi cheti anaweza tena kuleta barua kwenye hiyo mamlaka halali kuomba uhalali wa cheti chake kwamba hiyo maka hiyo mamlaka ithibitishe au ibatilishe uhalali wa hicho cheti? Sidhani, naona atakimbia kwanza. Ah, swali lingine. Je, yeah, Rita inaweza kuthibitisha uraia wa mtu? Sio kazi ya Rita kuthibitisha uraia. Kama nilivyosema awali, Rita kazi yake ni kuthibitisha kizazi kimetokea katika wilaya zilizopo katika Tanzania bara kazi ya kuthibitisha uraia sio ipo katika mamlaka ya Rita ipo katika mamlaka ya uhamiaji kwa hiyo cheti cha kuzaliwa chenyewe kinathibitisha nini kizazi hicho cha huyo mtu aliyopo katika hiyo cheti amezaliwa katika moja ya sehemu zilizopo Tanzania bara kwa hiyo ni uthibitisho wa kuzaliwa tu Je, yeah, hebu tena ielezee mahakama hicho cheti ambacho huyo John Peter Pentelekis alikileta wakati analeta hiyo barua yake. Kipo kwenye rekodi za Rita au hakipo? Hakipo kwenye rekodi za Rita. Uh, ye yeah, mtu ambaye amegusha cheti anaweza wakati ameshagusha anaweza kuwa ule ule umeshajibu kwamba anaweza kwa hiyo umeeleza kwamba mtu ambaye amegusi cheti hawezi na kaomba mamlaka inahusika na utoaji wa veti kuhalalisha au kukibadilisha hicho cheti hawezi kwanza anajua kifika lazima tutamkamata kwa sababu ni atakuwa amegushi nyaraka yetu asante uh, Shahidi vile vile hapo ume, umeuliza kwamba kwa nini ukuona na ukuwa, ukuona umuhimu wa kuja na cheti chako cha kuzaliwa au kinachoonesha kwamba kimetolewa kime na Rita Unaweza ukasemaje kusiana hilo swala Objections uh, honorable president I did not ask that question I said any I did not say I did not ask it to bring her own certificate. I say any certificate that show that the Rita is written that it is issued by Rita, not her own certificate as my learned brother is good in. Yeah, we knew that it was a general question, that's why we say proceed yes. when we ask you to proceed. Continue. Asante lakini anakanusha ni kitu ambacho kipo hata kwenye record kipo amemuulizia ame kuhusu cheti chake cha kuzaliwa personal huyu shahidi hicho hawezi akikuepa kwa sababu hata record zipo hawezi akikuepa hicho lakini hata hiyo general kuna muhimu gani wa kuleta cheti wakati tayari ishu ambayo iko mahakamani hapa ni cheti ambacho ye ushahidi wa cheti cha John Robert Penesis ndo amekuja kutolea ushahidi na he ni shahidi kwa hiyo ni sisi ambao tunajua ni kitu gani ambacho 
kielezo gani ambacho kinafaa kwenye hii kesi. Kwa hiyo hata hiyo swali vile vile alikuwa na msingi. Lakini rekodi zinaonyesha amemuuliza swali la kuhusu cheti chake huyo shahidi. Rekodi zipo. Asante. L'heure est déjà avancée, donc... Euh, euh, ok. Time is fast, so I will ask uh, which... Who of the judges want to ask the question? Uh, one question or... Yeah. Ok. Justice, uh, you want to... Ok. Yes? Justice Ben Saoula. Euh, oui, euh, je disais que vous aviez parlé de base de données en parlant des enregistrements des naissances. En général, quand on parle de base de données, on est dans. Juge Ben Saoula, attendez que ce ministre de son écouteur. Is it okay? Allez, c'est pour votre question. Donc, je disais que quand vous êtes en train de nous expliquer comment se faisaient les enregistrements mm -hmm. des naissances, vous aviez parlé de base de données. Est-ce que cela veut dire qu'en Tanzanie, l'état civil est informatisé miaka ya nyuma usajili haujaingizwa bado ndani ya kanzidata bado zipo kwenye manual zipo kwenye vitabu vyetu kwa hiyo sasa rita bado ipo kwenye mchakato wa kuzitoa kwenye vitabu na kuviingiza kwenye kanzidata yani kuingizwa kuwa computerized OK donc donc si je comprends bien il y a que dans votre service et à travers votre service on peut retirer un extrait de sens. Il n'y a pas ailleurs où on peut le faire. Kwa hichi kizazi kilichotokea nyuma, miaka ya nyuma sana, kabla miaka ya elfu mbili na nane, au na saba huko, unazikuta bado kwenye vitabu vietu. Tuna vitabu venye bando ya entries za watoto miatatu miatatu. Kwa hiyo zipo hizo ambazo ndo zinatumika kwenye kuangalia kizazi kimetokea wapi. Na vipo vimepangwa kutokana na wilaya iliyo fanya usajili. Kwa kesi hii usika unaipata kwenye vitabu
deuxième, ma, pardon, ma deuxième question. Depuis le déclenchement de cette affaire, qui va faire quand même des années, est-ce qu'il y a eu quelque chose qui a été engagé contre ces documents erronés Est-ce que vous avez fait quelque chose Est-ce qu'il y a dans votre législation une procédure à suivre pour annuler tout document d'état civil erroné Est-ce qu'une est qu procédure a été faite ou jusqu'à présent rien du tout Merci, M. le Président. C'est ma dernière question. <coughs> Vous n'avez pas saisi la question You didn't you didn't get the question? No. tegemea na usahihi wa hicho cheti ukoje kwa mfano kama ni cheti ambacho kimepatikana lakini hakikupatikana kwa njia sahihi labda mtu alitoa information ambazo sio za kweli na akaweza kutolewa cheti ambacho kimeingizwa mpaka kwenye kumbukumbu inapobainika hicho cheti hakipo sahihi cha kwanza ofisi ikishapata taarifa itafuatilia kwa sababu zile fomu za maombi zote zinakuwepo ofisini na kuangalia maombi yake ya koje na kuangalia usahihi wake ulikuwaje na ikibanika yale maombi hayakuambatanishwa vielelezo ambavyo ni sahihi au kulikuwa na taarifa za uongo cha kwanza tunaitoa katika rejista yetu alafu tunazinafata taratibu za kumpeleka huyo mtu polisi kutoa ripoti na polisi kama investigation machinery Tanzania inaendelea kuendelea kum kumchukua huyo mtu na kumpeleka mahakamani kwa makosa ya jinai na pia sheria yetu ya vizazi na vifo inatoa makosa mtu anapotoa uh, maelezo ya uongo ili aweze kupata cheti lakini sasa kwa kesi hii usika hichi cheti hakipo kabisa kwenye register yetu kwa hiyo hakuna sehemu nitasema kinafutwa ni cheti ambacho haki existi katika records za rita hakipo ndio maana jambo la kwanza lilikuwa ni kumtafuta mwenye cheti ili tujue maana tutakumpata anapohojiwa tunaweza kujua ni kina nani huko mtaani wengine wanajaribu kuiga kazi ambayo inafanywa na Rita. Kwa hiyo baada ya kutafutwa huyu mtu ilibainika kwamba tayari yuko magereza huko Bukoba na yuko njiani kwa yuko njiani kwa deported. Justice Chizomila uh, Several questions to ask you. 
the first one is a continuation of um, the question concerning records from my honorable sister, the judge. I just want to find out from you. I just want to find out from you um, if there has ever been a case in your office or in the district registry offices of documents concerning these certificates of birth and deaths either getting lost, that's one, or getting wet from rains like the rains are falling now. Sometimes in our offices we do get those accidents. Could you please give us that response? Uh, kwa ofisi yetu ina, inaweza kutokea tukapata taarifa kwamba wilaya fulani imepata matatizo labda zile yenye haraka zimepata matatizo lakini kama nilivyosema hapo awali kwamba hizi document zinaletwa makao makuu zinapoletwa makao makuu kuna copies kama mbili kuna zile ambazo zinabaki kwenye wilaya husika na kule na kuna ile ambayo ndio original register inakuja makao makuu kwa ajili ya kuhifadhiwa na zilipofika makao makuu reason tumeanza kwenye kanzi data please please there is no interpretation Uh, kama nilivyosema hapo awali kwamba taarifa kutoka mawilayani lazima ziletwe pale makao makuu na hizi zi, taarifa zinazokuja makao makuu zinakuja ni ile kuna vitabu original kitabu kinakuja kwa ajili ya kuhifadhiwa katika archive yetu lakini wilayani pia kuna baki na kopi kwa hiyo hata wilayani leo kama amepata madhara yoyote aidha mafuriko au moto umetokea nini akikosa records kule wilayani anaomba huku kwetu makao makuu kwa sababu records zinakuwa zipo huku na kule lakini maana kuleta makao makuu ni kwa ajili ya kuweka records za taasisi zote vizuri thank you my next question is uh, when was rita established Rita kama neno Rita ilianzishwa mwaka 2007 lakini kabla ya kuitwa Rita ilikuwa inaitwa ofisi ya msajili mkuu ambayo ilianzishwa mwaka 1907 kama sikosei ambapo vieti vya kwanza vilianza kuingia mwaka 1910 17 19 walianza watu kuwa registered um, thank you so my next question is you did indicate in your testimony that um, the certificates issued by Rita are written like that issued by Rita what about those certificates that were issued before Rita was established what was the main title of those certificates vieti vyote hata hicho ambacho kimeandikwa issued by Rita ni huku chini kabisa ndo kumeandikwa issued by Rita lakini juu kabisa title ina, ni ya jina la nchi kama vile vya zamani kabla ya uhuru ilikuwa ni ina, ni Tanganyika na baada ya uhuru ni the United Republic of Tanzania and issued by who issued sasa 
pale chini issued by return hivi vipya um, no, the old ones the old ones ilikuwa yes. zinaandikwa issued by registrar general thank you my following question is um, did you personally handle this particular matter or you came across it during part of your duties as an officer of rita Ili swala mimi lilinifikia kama msajili nikiwa kazini. As a registrar. Yes. So did you are you the one who received the letter yourself or it came to you as the registrar? Hapana, ikibarua yote inapotoka nje inafika masjala haiji kwangu. Ina, ina ngazi zinapitia. Itaingia masjala, itatoka masjala, itaenda kwa chief executive wa Rita ambaye ndio msajili mkuu itashuka kwenda kwa mm, director wa legal rights protection itatoka hapo itaenda kwa manager wa usajili manager wa usajili ndio ataassign watu waifanyie kazi kuangalia hii kumbukumbu inasemaje ili apewe afisa wa kujibu thank you uh, my next question is um, what proof do you have that this letter was written by the applicant as an office ah uh, ibarua ilitoka usini kwetu kwa iliandikwa na afisa wetu ambaye alijibu na pia ina nembo ya ofisini kwetu na ipo katika kumbukumbu zetu i think you did not get my question I said what proof does the reader have that that letter came from the applicant? <coughs> Or you don't have any proof. You are unable to answer that one. May I proceed to my next question? Mm -hmm. You will answer this question. sikulelewa swali erudia swali i said what proof does rita have that that letter we are talking about was written by the applicant which came to your office and which you responded to that it was indeed written by the kwa hizi nyaraka zilizokuja usini kwetu nina mm, kuna barua ambayo iliyoletwa iligongwa muhuri wa received kwamba imeingia kwetu sorry what is that ili it was stamped by stamp by by officer wa registry registry officer from where from our office your office yes she stamped uh, it when within. she received aha uh -huh. okay mm -hmm. i will not continue asking belaboring you on that very same question but um my final question to you is um you have informed this court that um that application and the number that was written on that application you proved it to be false because when you went to the region of or region of origin you discovered that the number that was put on that application or the number that was referred to had not yet been reached it was far away and you even informed the court that probably even up to now that number hasn't been reached yet now my question is apart from looking at that number did you look at other factors beyond that number other pertinent information to prove the authenticity of that application mheshimiwa jaji kama nilivyosema awali baada ya kupata maombi hayo 
Kwanza naomba nirekebishe sikusema nilienda Muleba. No I did also I did not say you did. Please continue. Ah kwa hiyo baada ya kuona kwamba hakipo kwenye kumbukumbu zetu bado tena tuliangalia sio tu namba kwamba haipo kwenye kumbukumbu yetu. Hiyo ni moja lakini pia tu, lazima tuangalie hata kama huyo watu kuna kikundi cha watu nje wanachezea vyeti vyetu ni wa, kwa, ki, kwa kiasi gani wanaweza kutukopi kazi zetu. Kwa hiyo tuweza kuangalia hata alie sign kile cheti na jina lake ni nani. Ukiangalia ile signature iliyopo kwenye hicho cheti kilicho tukikia sisi ni ime imesainiwa kama inataka kufanana na msajili ambaye alipaswa kuwa Dar es Salaam ambaye ni msajili mkuu wakati kile cheti kimetoka Muleba. Kwa hiyo hakiwezi kuwa cheti kimetoka Muleba kimeombewa Muleba halafu anaye sign awe ni msajili mkuu wa Dar es Salaam. Wakati nimesema hapo awali kila wilaya ina msajili wake. Kwa hiyo kwa cheti kilicho sajili kilicho <coughs> sajiliwa <coughs> Samani, Muleba alipaswa kusaini mtu ambaye yuko Muleba. Kwa hiyo tuliangalia vitu tofauti kuona. Pia hata huyo ambaye ameonekana pale kama ndio msajili majimbi, tukajaribu tukaangalia tena kwenye kumbukumbu zetu. Entry namba haipo. Lakini je, katika hizi ambazo zipo sasa hii kipindi kile ambayo entry namba ni 1360 na kuendelea, nani alikuwa signatory? Hakuwa Magimbi. Je, Magimbi ni msajili wetu? Ni kweli kuna mtu anaitwa Magimbi lakini hakuwa Muleba. Yeye alikuwa Bukoba. Kwa hiyo ni vitu ambavyo ni vingi tuliviangalia kuona hata kama kuna udanganyifu unafanywa huko mitaani pia tunaangalia ni udanganyifu kwa kiasi kwa kiasi gani ili pia tuweze kuona vitu gani vya kuweza kuviangalia zaidi. Thank you very much. Thank you honorable president. Any other judge want to put questions? No, no. Okay. Okay. Justice uh, Niugeko. Good afternoon. My mic is not working. Good afternoon, madam. Are you hearing me? Good afternoon. Yeah, he's here. Yes. Uh, you did say that uh, the birth certificate is not by itself uh, a genuine proof of citizenship. As far as you know, which kind of document in the Tanzanian legal system constitute a genuine evidence of citizenship. Ni kweli cheti cha kuzaliwa sio proof ya uraia. Kama nilivyosema awali, cheti cha kuzaliwa kina proof kwamba huyo mtu amezaliwa katika moja ya wilaya zilizopo Tanzania bara. Vitu ambavyo vinaweza kumfanya mtu awe raia Uh, nadhani vinapatikana kwenye immigration act kule uhamiaji ndio wana vitu vya kuonyesha uraia na pia na, uraia una, una jinsi yake ya kupatikana mtu kuwa raia lakini sio kwa kutumia cheti cha kuzaliwa so does it mean <coughs> Does it mean, for instance, when uh, any uh, Tanzanian is uh, <coughs> willing to get a Tanzanian passport, has to go first to the immigration department to get this uh, document which proves it, its nationality? mtu ambaye anataka 
yaani kuonyesha uraia wake uhamiaji ndio sehemu sahihi ya kudi, ya kumuonyesha yeye ndio raia lakini sio Rita Rita ni unaonyeshwa unaelezea kwamba huyo mtu amezaliwa katika ardhi ya Tanzania awe mchina awe msudani awe nani amekuja Tanzania anafanya kazi mke wake amejifungua Tanzania ana haki ya kupata cheti cha kuzaliwa cha huyo mtoto kwa kuwa hicho kizazi kimetokea katika nchi ya Tanzania So is there uh, that is my last <coughs> request for clarification is, is there uh, in the Tanzanian legal system a document for instance which could be called citizenship certificate like you have birth certificate or you are not aware of that Yes, uh, as far as you know, uh, is there in the Tanzanian legal system, because you said you were postgraduate in law as well, uh, if you don't know it doesn't matter, but as far as you know, is there in the Tanzanian legal system a document which uh, should be called citizenship uh, certificate, like you have birth certificate? That, that, that is the question uh, I want to ask. Again, if you are not aware, you are not aware, but in case you know, it would be helpful for us to understand um, the difference between birth certificate and any other document which might constitute a genuine evidence of citizenship. Excuse me. sana na mambo ya uraia na kazi za uhamiaji lakini najua kama nahitaji passport naweza kwenda uhamiaji nikafanya application nikapata hati ya kusafiria lakini sina uhakika na shughuli zao zingine Vice President. Uh, um, uh, good afternoon. Um, I just want to understand mm -hmm. one thing. That this letter that was received at Urita in Dar es Salaam, was it um, in the name of um, Robert John, Robert Panda, uh, Pandasis, or, or John Pandasis, or Robert John Penesis. Uh, kwenye hiyo barua ilikuwa imeandika John Robert Pendesis. John Robert Pendesis. Okay. Mm. Okay. And when was it received in Dar es Salaam the request? You said it was stamped. What what is the date of the stamp? But around when? Twenty And what was uh, the request? The request was to be reissued with the. Uh, but by that time, uh, Robert John Penesis was already serving sentence. Was already in prison. India. Okay, thank you. Is this it? 
Allez-y pour votre question. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Madame, nous savons tous que dans nos pays, nous avons des services de l'État civil qui partent de l'hôpital pour habiter à la direction des affaires civiles pour établir les actes. Je voulais vous demander, madame, s'il vous est arrivé une fois de recevoir un acte qui était faux et que l'on a repris dans le service. Est-ce qu'il vous est arrivé de recevoir un acte qui a été établi faux, un acte faux, et qu'il fallait rectifier Si oui, quelle est l'institution chargée de la rectification Est-ce le tribunal Est-ce le service supérieur d'état civil Est-ce le ministère de l'Intérieur Quel est l'organe chargé de, de, de procéder à la rectification s'il y a erreur. Ah, kama ni mekuelea vizuri, kama na pata cheti ambacho ni fake, yani sio halali, hiko sio cha kurekebishwa, tayari hicho ni fake, sio halali. Ni uyo mtu ambaye ana hicho cheti ni kutoa taarifa polisi aweze kuchukuliwa hatua za kisheria lakini pale inapotokea kuna cheti kimetolewa na mamlaka yetu lakini kina errors kuna vitu vimekosewa labda spelling ya jina au mtu amekosea tarehe kinaweza kufanywa marekebisho pale ambapo kimetolewa kwa hiyo kama kimetolewa mkoani na anarudi kule alipokichukulia tunarudi kwenye kumbukumbu zetu kwa sababu tunaamini wakati mtu analeta application zake vile viambatanisho ni viambatanisho sahihi kwa hiyo kama ni era imetokea labda ni typing era au mtu ameshindwa kusoma vizuri majina basi atarekebisha lakini kwa kurudi kuangalia vile viambatanisho ambapo vililetwa wakati anafanya application yake na hiyo ya kukosea inatokea mara kwa mara unakuta mtu amekuja labda ni Mjerumani zile spelling zake na majina jinsi alivyo inakuwa ngumu kwa mtu wa kutaipu kuweza kuenda nayo vizuri. Kwa hiyo ikitokea kuna makosa ametokea pale inarekebishwa. Okay. I think uh, we are done with you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm now going to proceed with the next uh, witness. The witness is coming. We have three witnesses, I think. Yes, we have three witnesses. We assume that a person is going to call the witness. Yeah.
Mimi Clement Bernard Mubanga na hapa na hapa kwa dhati kwa dhati kulingana na heshima kulingana na heshima na nafsi yangu na nafsi yangu kwamba nitasema kwamba nitasema ukweli 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 mtupu ukweli mtupu na sio chochote kingine na sio chochote kingine isipokuwa ukweli isipokuwa ukweli Okay, for the two next uh, witnesses, I think I will limit to 15, 15 minutes. 15 Much minutes. Right. Yeah, 15 minutes. And I will stop you when the 15 minutes... Uh... Na omba mwishmo jaji wajaji wa makama hii, kufu, ni zungumze kwa luga ya kiswahili. Shahidi tunaomba majina yako kwa ukamilifu pamoja na umri wako this, the second microphone the yellow one can you switch on the one on top the one on top okay sorry shahidi naomba uifahamishe mahakama hii tukufu majina yako kwa ukamilifu na umri wako Jina langu naitwa Clement Bernardo Mubanga. Nina umri wa miaka 40. Unafanya kazi gani? Ninafanya kazi uhamiaji. Uhamiaji upo katika chini ya wizara gani? Uhamiaji ipo chini ya wizara mambo ya ndani ya nchi. Umekuwa ukifanya kazi hiyo kwa muda gani sasa? Nimekuwa nikifanya kazi hiyo kwa muda wa miaka 13 sasa. Tangu 2005. Ya lengo langu ni kwa kifupi tu uieleze mahakama hii. Uh, kwanza labda taaluma yako. Taaluma yangu ni mwanasheria. Mwanasheria. Yes. Sasa naomba uieleze mahakama hii eh, jinsi gani mtu anaweza kuwa raia wa Tanzania? Kwa kuanzia na mnyumbuliko eh, kabla ya uhuru na to that extent kwa kwa kusummarize kwa sababu ya msingi kwanza nieleze kwamba uraia wa Tanzania unaongozwa na sheria ya uraia ya Tanzania ya mwaka 1995 sura 357 rejeo la mwaka 2022 sheria hiyo ime consolidate sheria zilizokuwa zinaongoza sheria uraia wa Tanzania kwa maana ya kabla ya uhuru wa Tanzania baada ya uhuru na hata baada ya muungano kwa hiyo katika sheria hiyo utaona kwamba pamoja na kwamba tunatumia sheria hiyo ya uraia mwaka 95 kuna sheria zingine ambazo nitazitaja ambazo ni za nyuma kabla ya sheria hiyo mwaka 95 haijatungwa na sheria hizo kwa mujibu wa sheria hiyo ya uraia mwaka 95 bado zinaendelea kutambulika kwa maana kwamba wale ambao walipata uraia wa Tanzania katika kipindi ambacho sheria hizo zilikuwa zinafanya kazi bado wanaendelea kutambulika kuwa ni raia wa Tanzania kwa mujibu wa sheria hizo na wale ambao walikuwa hao na sifa za kuwa raia wa Tanzania kwa mujibu wa sheria hizo Bado katika sheria hii mpya ya mwaka 95 hawezi kutambulika kuwa raia wa Tanzania. Sasa nieleze kwa fupi namna gani uraia wa Tanzania unavyopatikana. Uraia wa Tanzania unapatikana katika makundi makubwa matatu. Kundi la kwanza ni raia wa Tanzania wa kuzaliwa. Lakini kundi la pili ni raia wa Tanzania kwa kurithi na kundi la tatu ni raia wa Tanzania kwa tajinisi tunaita naturalization sasa nieleze kwa urefu zaidi kuhusu raia wa Tanzania kwa kuzaliwa na kwa muktadha wa 
mahakama hii itapenda zaidi ijikite katika uraia wa kuzaliwa kuliko uraia wa kurithi na tajinisi. Uraia wa kuzaliwa kwa mujibu wa sheria uraia ya mwaka 95 inasema kwamba uraia wa kuzaliwa unagawanyika katika makundi makubwa mawili kwamba katika kipindi cha kabla ya muungano watanganyika na Zanzibar lakini kundi la pili ni kipindi cha baada ya muungano watanganyika na Zanzibar litaanza na kipindi cha kabla ya muungano watanganyika na Zanzibar kifungu kinachozungumzia uraia kipindi cha kabla ya muungano watanganyika na Zanzibar ni section 4 subsection 1 ya hiyo sheria uraia ya mwaka 95 inasema hivi kwamba ili mtu ahesabike kuwa raia wa Tanzania kwa kuzaliwa lazima kwanza awe amezaliwa Tanzania kwa mzazi mmoja wapo ama wazazi wote ambaye pia ni mtanzania Sasa kama nilivyoeleza kwamba sheria mwaka 95 ilikuwa inatambua sheria za nyuma ambazo zikuwa zinatambua ni yupi sasa aliyezaliwa kabla ya muungano Hapa tunapata sheria kubwa mbili Tunao sheria tunaita The Citizenship Act ya mwaka 61 lakini pia tunayo The Citizenship Ordinance ya mwaka 61 pia. Sheria hizo zinatuongoza kugawa uraia wa kuzaliwa kabla ya muungano katika makundi makubwa mawili tena. Kundi la kwanza ni wale ambao tunasema walipata uraia wa Tanganyika kabla ya uhuru yani tarehe 9 mwezi wa 12 mwaka 61. Lakini kundi la pili katika mkusanyiko huo ni la wale waliopata uraia wa Tanganyika kuanzia tarehe ya uhuru mpaka kabla ya muungano wa Tanganyika na Zanzibar. Sasa ili uwe na sifa ya kwamba wewe ni raia ulikuwa raia wa Tanganyika kabla ya uhuru wa Tanganyika ilikuwa ni lazima kwanza uwe umezaliwa Tanganyika ya wakati huo hilo ni la kwanza lakini la pili lazima uwe either ulikuwa ni citizen of the United Kingdom ama British protected person hiyo ilikuwa ni ya pili lakini ya tatu lazima mzazi wako mmoja ama wote wawe nao wamezaliwa Tanganyika ya wakati huo. Hiyo ilikuwa ni kwa mujibu wa The Citizenship Act ya mwaka 61. Na hiyo ni kundi la kwanza. Lakini kundi la pili ili uwe na sifa ya kutambulika kwamba wewe ulikuwa ni raia wa Tanganyika baada ya uhuru wa Tanganyika yani kuanzia tarehe 9 mwezi wa 12 mwaka 61 hadi mwaka 1964 tarehe 25 mwezi wa 4 yani kabla ya muungano sheria ilikuwa inasema hivi kwamba ili uwe na sifa hiyo lazima kwanza uwe umezaliwa Tanganyika ya wakati huo na mzazi wako mmoja awe ni raia wa Tanganyika. Mtaomba nisitize hilo kwamba kabla ya tarehe 9 mwezi wa 12 mwaka 61 sharti la mzazi ilikuwa ni mzazi au amezaliwa Tanganyika na baada ya uhuru sharti ilikuwa ni kwamba lazima mzazi wako mmoja awe ni raia wa Tanganyika. Kwa hiyo kama ulikuwa una sifa hizo 
ulikuwa unaweza kuitwa raia wa Tanganyika kwa namna hiyo niloitaja isipokuwa ulikuwa na exceptions kama pamoja na yote hayo kama ulikuwa umezaliwa kwa mzazi mmoja wapo na hasa baba ambaye alikuwa anahesabika kama ni adui wa Tanganyika ya wakati huo lakini pia na wewe ukazaliwa katika maeneo ambayo yanakaliwa na adui ulikuwa huwezi kuwa na sifa hizo nilizozielezea lakini sambamba na hayo exception nyingine ilikuwa ni kwamba kama umezaliwa kwa baba ambaye ana immunity dhidi ya civil suits ulikuwa huwezi kuwa na sifa ya kuwa raia wa Tanganyika hata kama ulikumetimiza masharti yote hayo kwa hiyo hilo ndio naweza nikaeleza kwa uraia wa kuzaliwa kabla ya muungano you have seven minutes yes. kwa upande wa baada ya muungano wa Tanganyika na Zanzibar tunasema kwamba ili uweze ku qualify kuwa raia wa Tanzania sasa ulitakiwa kwamba uwe umezaliwa Tanzania kwa mzazi mmoja wapo ambaye naye ni mtanzania tukumbuka kwamba sifa ya utanzania inarudi kwenye sheria za nyuma nizo zitaja kwa kama ni mzazi unajipima kwenye sheria hizi za nyuma ni nazo sifa kulingana na sheria nilizo zitaja kwa hiyo ndio aina ya kwanza ya uraia wa Tanzania kwa kuzaliwa lakini aina ya pili niliyosema ni uraia wa Tanzania kwa kurithi yani Tanzania citizenship by descent kwamba ili uwe na sifa kwamba wewe ni raia wa Tanzania kwa kurithi ni kwamba unakuwa umezaliwa nje ya Tanzania kwa mzazi mmoja wapo ambaye naye ni mtanzania na utanzania huo nao sema wa mzazi ni kwamba huyo mzazi asiwe raia naye by descent awe ni raia either by birth or by naturalization kwa maana kwamba ukizaliwa nje ya Tanzania kwa mzazi mmoja wako ambaye naye ni raia by descent uwezi kuwa na sifa ya kuwa raia wa Tanzania by descent. Hilo lilikuwa likifanyika katika picha. Najua una maelezo mengi lakini muda hautoshi. Sasa nikuulize kwamba je uh, watu ambao walikuwa ndani ya Tanganyika kabla ya uhuru na ambao hawakuwa uh, wazazi wao hawakuwa wamezaliwa ndani ya Tanganyika yani iwe labda ni Muholanzi au sijui Mgiriki wao ilikuwa wanatakiwa kuwa na yes come again nataka kufahamu kutoka kwa shahidi kwamba Yes it is on. It is on. Nataka kufahamu tu kwa shahidi kuhusiana na raia ambao wazazi wao hawakuwa hawakuwa wamezaliwa Tanganyika lakini wanatoka katika tofauti na wale British protectorate tulizozitaja hapo. Wao walikuwa wanatakiwa wafanye nini ili qualify kuwa wa, na uraia wa Tanzania? Watu kama hao sheria iliwapa muda kwamba baada ya kupata uhuru tarehe 9 mwezi wa 12 mwaka 2061 walitakiwa wafanye registration na walipewa muda wa miaka miwili kwamba katika kipindi cha miaka miwili wao wamefanya registration kwa kama ukufanya registration na kupata registration citizenship uh, by registration ina maana kwamba tayari unapoteza uraia kwa kuteza uraia unasema hujapata uraia wa Tanzania kwa majibu hayo shahidi ni sahihi kusema kwamba e, aliyekuepo Tanganyika kwa kipindi hicho automatically alikuwa anakuwa e, raia wakati wa uhuru yani kama uhuru umemkuta hapa automatically anakuwa raia 
si sahihi hata kidogo uh, unafahamu una, 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 una nini kuhusiana na mleta maombi katika kesi hii anaitwa Robert John Penesis ninachofahamu kuhusu Robert John Penesis ninafahamu kwamba huyu kwa mujibu wa nyaraka ambazo nimezisoma ni kwamba huyu mtu amesema amezaliwa amezaliwa Tanzania lakini kwa mujibu wa nyaraka zilizosoma huyu mtu si kwamba amezaliwa Tanzania na certificate ambayo alitolewa birth certificate ilionekana kabisa kwamba ni fort kwa ni lazima ufahamu John Penesis ambao huyu nimemsoma kwa nyaraka na kwa mujibu wa sheria hizo nilizozieleza sio uraia wa Tanzania ulipata kufahamu au ku, 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 juu ya kuwepo kwa kesi ya Robert Penesis na labda mahakama zilisema nini nilipata kufahamu ndio maana katika kupitia pia nikapata pia na kulifahamu kidogo swala hilo la Robert Okay last question for the for the respondent okay and the, the applicant is born in uh, 1968 yes <coughs> okay uh that's all man. that's all okay thank you Res yes applicant also 15 minutes Ulishawahi kufanya kazi kwenye anti fraud squad? Hapana. Ulishawahi kufanya kazi kwenye kitengo cha foja kwa identify fraud document? Sijawahi kufanya? Sijawahi kufanya. Kwa hiyo ni sawa nikisema unaposema e, cheti ulicholetewa au ulichoona ni fold unasema kitu usichokuwa na uhakika naye sio sahihi kwa sababu kama nilivyosema kwamba nilisoma nyaraka na mamlaka zinazotoa vieti vya kuzaliwa kwa mujibu wa nyaraka zile zilikuwa zinaeleza kabisa kwamba cheti hicho kilikuwa ni fault. Shahidi Tanzania kuna kitengo kinachobaini document ambazo zimekuwa fault. Ipo haipo. Kipo. Shahidi kwenye hicho cheti kimekuja na muhuri inaoonyesha kwamba ni fault document. Ili kitu kionekana kwamba ni fault kitu kwamba kuwe na muhuri nataka ujibu swali wewe ni wewe ni mwanasheria ni kitu swali ndio unajibu kwamba kuna muhuri kutoka kitengo hicho kilicholetwa kwako inachoonyesha kwamba this certificate is a forged document kwenye hicho cheti simba ilikuepo haikuepo uthibitisho wa forged ni, ni mamlaka iliyotoa cheti hicho ndio iliyothibitisha kwamba cheti hiki ni forged kwa hiyo hicho mamlaka ilikuja na cheti kingine juu yake ambayo inasema this certificate is a forged document. Kweli si kweli? Sio lazima ilete cheti kingine. Mamlaka inaangalia cheti kilicholetwa mbele yake kwa vigezo vyake inaangalia kama kweli cheti hiki ni forged ama sio forged. Sio lazima mamlaka ilete cheti kingine. Kwa hiyo mamlaka hiyo haikuleta kielelezo chochote kinachoonyesha kwamba hiyo cheti ni forged ili kuthibitisha kwamba cheti hicho ni forged mamlaka husika zilitoa maelezo 
na hayo walitoa kwa documentation kwa barua kwamba this kwa na hiyo barua walio elezea kwamba this document is fault bila shaka uko nayo barua hiyo imeifikisha kwa hiyo hapa sinayo hapa lakini mamlaka zinazohusika wanaweza kuwa barua Nasema shahidi kwamba kesi ya Robert Spencer unaitwa kidogo ni hiyo ndio rai yako uliosema mahakamani Niliposema kidogo ulisema unajua kidogo hukusema <coughs> zipo record na uko under oath tafsiri ya kidogo Unaweza kaiona ni ndogo lakini kumbe ni pana zaidi. Msomo ulisema unaijua kidogo au hapana? Nilisema hivyo nikiwa ninamaanisha maana ya kuifahamu. Sawa. Hapana yake kadiri inavyoweza kuifahamu. Shahidi mtu aliyezaliwa Tanzania mwaka elfu moja mia tisa, sitini na nane Hiyo ni baada ya muungano au kabla ya muungano? baada ya muungano baada ya muungano ndio shahidi kwa hiyo mtu aliyezaliwa kwenye territory ya Tanzania Tanzania ambao wazazi wake ni wa Tanzania wote baba mama na kuendelea ni mtanzania si mtanzania kama wazazi wake wote ni wa Tanzania na yeye kazaliwa Tanzania ikathibitika hivyo ni mtanzania ni mtanzania shahidi wewe ni ofisa wa uhamiaji je hebu naomba itafsirie mahakama kutoka kiingereza hiki lishwenda kiswahili maana ya birth certificate kutoka kiingereza kuingia kiswahili kuingia kiswahili Birth certificate ni cheti cha kuzaliwa. Ni cheti cha kuzaliwa. Shahidi umesema kategori ya kwanza ya mtanzania ni uraia wa kuzaliwa. Kwa hiyo ni sawa nikisema kwamba cheti cha kuzaliwa ndio kinachothibitisha kwamba wewe ni mzaliwa wa Tanzania ndio maana inaitwa cheti cha kuzaliwa kama cheti hicho kimetolewa kwa mamlaka halali na kihalali bila kuwa na udanganyifu wowote kinaonyesha kwamba wewe umezaliwa Tanzania lakini ndio sasa uweke sawa kwa sababu majaji wanatakiwa wajue hivyo je Mtu akizaliwa Tanzania na akapewa cheti cha cheti cha kuzaliwa hiyo inaonyesha ni raia wa Tanzania regardless of whatever hiyo ni subject na criminality nyingine. Kweli si kweli? Si kweli hata kidogo. Ndio maana cheti cha uraia, cheti cha kuzaliwa kabla kilikuwa kinatolewa na uraia wa mzazi. Unaweza kuwa umezaliwa Tanzania lakini wazazi wako wote wakawa si raia wa Tanzania au ina sifa ya kuwa automatically kwamba wewe ni raia wa Tanzania. Shahidi. Nakupa mfano, halafu unijibu. Mimi nimezaliwa Dodoma, baba ni mgogo, mama ni mgogo, wote na wazazi ni wagogo. Mwaka 1968 nikapata cheti kinachoandikwa cheti cha kuzaliwa. Mimi ni mtanzania ama si mtanzania? umesema kwamba mama ni mgogo baba ni mgogo kwa tafsiri yake ni mgogo lakini pia na sisi lazima tujiridhishe tusiseme ugogo tuseme utanzania ni kweli ni tanzania, tanzania. Ah, ngoja nikurudishe tena kama ugogo ni shida mtu amezaliwa Tanzania mwaka 60 nimezaliwa mfano mimi 60 na nani baba mtanzania mama mtanzania nikapata cheti cha kuzaliwa kinachoonyesha cheti cha kuzaliwa sio mtanganyika mtanzania mimi ni mtanzania si mtanzania 
Nirudia kusema kama baba Mimi ni mtanzania, mtanzania sio mtanzania usikwepe kwepe kama ni halali kwamba baba ni mtanzania mama ni mtanzania na wao kazaliwa Tanzania ikathibitika hivyo bila mashaka nirudia bila mashaka wewe ni raia wa Tanzania kwa kuzaliwa Shahidi wewe ni migrant immigration officer Ulisharuhusika kutoaji wa vyeti vya kuzaliwa Hapana sababu sio mamlaka yangu kwa maana hiyo hujui process za kutoa vyeti vya kuzaliwa. Kutokuwa mamlaka ya utoaji wa vyeti hicho hakumaanishi kwamba sijui taratibu za utoaji. Ulishai kuhusika katika kutoa? Sijawahi kuhusika. Lakini ninajua. Shahidi, unajua hujui mara unajua mara hujui. Shahidi, <coughs> kuna cheti chochote zaidi ya cheti cha kuzaliwa ambacho kimeandikwa cheti cha uraia wa Tanzania kutoka immigration hapana tuna tuna Aha, certificate um, of naturalization still had uh, five minutes, but uh, since you have no question, uh, yeah. you want to? Some few questions. questions. Okay. Five minutes. Yes. Shahidi, umeulizwa hapa kama kuna mamlaka unayoitambua ambayo inahusiana na uh, kuthibitisha maswala ya kugushi, ya nifoja. Ukasema unaitambua. Ni ipi labda? Ona ifam. Anti fraud. Some anti fraud. Anti fraud. Sasa tukirejea katika cheti hiki cha kuzaliwa charita. Ni mamlaka ipi ilikuwa sahihi kusema kwamba cheti hiki ni cha kugushi? Mamlaka iliyokuwa sahihi ilikuwa ni mamlaka ya Rita ambao ndio watoaji wa vyeti vya kuzaliwa. Kwa unavyofahamu ukiwa afisa uhamiaji na kwa kumbukumbu za ilizopo uhamiaji. Kuna uthibitisho wote unaonesha kwamba wazazi wa John Robert Penesi si ni ni wa Tanzania. Hapana. That's all. Honorable President, the last question, uh, the last question was, uh, it was, it was uh, a cross-examination question instead of re-examination re question. That's why he just he said no. Okay. Now we move to the last uh, witness. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, okay, please, please. Excuse me, excuse me. We are tired at this time. <laughs> okay. Any judge want to? I was hoping that no. Yes, Justice uh, Ben Saula. Tulifanikiwa kuona nakala nakala za passport hizo kwa sababu passport original alikuwa nazo mwenye passport mwenyewe sisi tuliweza kuona nakala ya passport hizo
sijui kama tutakuwa nimepata swali la mwanzoni sana sababu nimevaa wakati tayari ameanza kutoa maelezo Translation, translation. Translation. Namba rudi ya tena sija ipata vizuri translation. Sama namba rudi ya tena sija ipata vizuri translation. Est-ce que je la question oui parce qu'on a un problème. Donc vous n'avez pas trouvé de, de, de passeport tanzanien Est-ce que vous avez trouvé le troisième passeport tanzanien Bado si yapata tafsiri nafikiri kuna kuna tatizo labda kule mwanzo Hapana. Il n'a pas, il n'a pas compris la, ah, la question. Oui, oui. Est-ce que vous avez découvert le troisième passeport tanzanien Qu'est-ce qu'il dit qu'il y a un passeport tanzanien We wanted to deport him to South Africa. No, the passport, the passport. Because because he entered into the United Republic of Tanzania using a South African passport. So he was to be deported to South Africa because he used South African passport. D'accord, ma dernière question. Une ordonnance d'expulsion, elle a une longueur de vie de combien d'années quand vous ordonnez l'expulsion de quelqu'un et que vous n'exécutez pas pour une raison ou une autre, combien de temps la personne va rester détenue juste parce que cette ordonnance n'a pas été exécutée Parce qu'il est bien en détention. Merci. According to the law, it remains in force until the order is implemented. So until the order is implemented, then it remains in force to that effect. And uh, with regard to Robert, because he was to be deported to South Africa, and they didn't comply to the requirements to fulfill in order to be deported to South Africa. That's why the, depo the deportation order has not been implemented. Justice Matusse. Just a couple of questions. The first one, how long have you been working with immigration authorities? I've been working with the immigration authorities for 13 years now, 13 since 2005. Right. Yes. Have you ever come across a situation uh, in which an individual holding a birth certificate for having born in Tanzania have come to your office to now request some sort of confirmation of his or her citizenship. There are some situations 
where, because the law says that you may have dual nationality up to the period of 18 years. So for a person, for example, who was born outside Tanzania, to a parent who is a citizen of Tanzania, he or she may hold a passport of the other country, but when he reaches 18 years, he has to renounce that citizenship in order to be confirmed to be a citizen of Tanzania. So under that circumstance, one can come with a passport of, the, of other nationality because he has attained 18 years and he or she now wants to renounce that kind of citizenship or that nationality in order to remain with Tanzania citizenship. So that's the only situation which I, I can say I have faced. So uh, if I correctly understood, it is not a requirement for an, an individual born in Tanzania holding a birth certificate to come to your office and request some sort of confirmation of citizenship, correct? It is not necessary because one may be born in Tanzania to parents who are not Tanzanians and he doesn't at all wish to be a Tanzanian. So in, under those circumstances, there is no need to come to immigration office. Thank you, Honorable President. I have one question for you, sir. It's more of a clarification. You have informed the court that RITA is the rightful institution to confirm if a certificate has been forged, a birth certificate. Now, I want to find out how does Rita prove such forgery? Rita proves that forgery through internal mechanisms where they contact the anti-fraud uh, anti uh, authorities. When they confirm, they give the feedbacks to Rita and then Rita confirms that. Completely, this is a forgery. Thank you. Justice Gise. Merci, Monsieur le Président. J'ai posé une question qui me semble avoir été déjà posée. Vous avez trouvé le requérant avec trois passeports. Pourquoi? Quand vous avez jugé et dit qu'il n'était pas Tanzanien, pourquoi vous ne l'avez pas expulsé vers les autres pays dont il est titulaire d'un passeport I wanted to report him to the country where he originated. Because he may have Greek passport, he may have British passport. But when he was entering to Tanzania, he came using South African passport. That's why I wanted to put him to the, the same place where he originated. We, we haven't yet done that because the South African authorities need to issue some documentations and allow him to, to be deported to that country. And there are some requirements which require Mr. Robert to comply with in order to be deported to South Africa. Amongst the of them being issuance of a travel document. Now in issuing a travel document there are some requirements. For example, fingerprints. Confirmation that the same person wants to be deported to, to the same country. Now, unfortunately, Mr. Robert 
hasn't complied with the requirements of being taken of fingerprints by the embassy. Say that you, you you were able to find the South African, the British one. Have you been able to find the Tanzanian one? And you say no. And um, the British and the South African one. Do you have originals or have copies? No, we don't have the originals. The original were with the same, the applicant. Sorry? The original are we, were with the applicant. We only have, or oh, we came across to the certified copies of the, of the, of the passport. So you didn't take back his two passport when you decided to deport him? No, the, the passports haven't ever been in the custody of the immigration authorities. Including the South African one? Yes, of including. which you say uh, he was going to to enter to enter in, into Tanzania. Yes, including the so South Africa. Uh, how how have you been able to 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 ascertain that uh, he was traveling with uh, a South African passport if you didn't see it? We we, we had the the copies, the from, copies from of, where? The, of the passports. From where, please? From the applicant himself. And the copies were were when, they, when you just to understand when you get to the air, any air, airport, what you show is the original of the passport, not a copy of the passport. So, uh, can you clarify what happened for the good understanding of the court? Okay, for the good understanding of the court, the matter came to the attention of immigration department when the applicant came to apply for residence permit. So when he came to apply for residence permits is when we came to, to know that this person is a South African because he presented copies of South African passports which had endorsements of visas within the, the same passport. So it, it was not at the entry place? In a... No, it was not at the entry place. Now, another question, last question. <clears throat> when a deportation decision is made, we guess by uh, uh, the immigration department or whatever other authority, as far as you know, in the Tanzanian legal system, can the person concerned challenge the decision before a court of justice or not? No, as far as the law is concerned, he cannot challenge before he the court. He cannot before the court. Thank you. Vice President. <coughs> yeah, uh, thank you very much for your testimony. I would like to clarify this application for resident permit. Uh, when and where was it made? The application, if not mistaken, the exact date, it was made in Bukoba, in the early 2010. And um, so your testimony is that um, when he came to apply for resident permit, he submitted photocopies of his South African passport and his British passport. Uh, for, for the sake of for the sake of the of the application, it was the South African passport. Because that's the one which contained the endorsements of visas. And the British one? Where did you find the copy of the British one? The copies were obtained when he made some 
affidavits affidavits regarding his citizenship and uh, this application sorry this this south african passport was in the name of john pendasis it was not in the name of penis oh okay it was the name of in the name of john robert maitland john robert maitland maitland okay okay very well um and then you are saying that the original passports are with uh, this man uh, how do you know whether he has the originals? Is he with them in the prison or where does he have possession of those uh, uh, originals? Uh, our efforts have not uh, borne fruits to know where the passports have been, have, been, have been stored. But as far as we know that the passports have to be under the custody of the applicants. The immigration authorities do not hold passports of applicants. So okay. I'm not sure where the applicant has kept the passports because okay. it is up to his knowledge. Okay, but this application was, uh, just to understand the, the names, the way they are written on the, on the application, you said it's John Robert Maitland. Uh, Honorable Judge, there are confront, uh, conflicting names in the, in the applicant. That's why sometimes you find him written John no, Robert. The, the passport, the South African passport was in John Robert Maitland. I asked you before, you said John Robert Maitland, the South African passport only. There is some sort of John Robert Maitland or John Robert Rubenstein. There are conflicting of names of Rubenstein and Maitland. No, no, the South African passport, the one he submitted a copy in order to apply for a resident permit is in what name? The name of John, Robert John Maitland. Okay, thank you. Now, the final question I have is, do you have the original application for resident permit? The original application that was submitted by this John Robert Maitland for resident permit, do you have, can it be produced to the court? If requested, Honorable Judge, we can find it out. But right now, at this time, we don't have. Okay, thank you. Just a small clar clarification uh, for me. If uh, you came to the to your office uh, with a South African passport to ask for yes, yes. Uh, South African passport to ask for resident permit. So, what is the problem? Just want to understand. Yeah. If you fulfill the requirement, if you come to apply for residence permit and you are leaving the country legally, then there is no problem. But if you come to apply for residence permit and then you find that you have been leaving the country illegally, then that's where the problem begins. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Joseph Maradai. Na hapa kwa dhati. Na hapa kwa dhati. Kulingana na heshima na nafsi yangu. Kulingana na heshima na nafsi yangu. Kwamba kwamba nitasema ukweli. Nitasema ukweli. Ukweli mtupu. Ukweli mtupu. Na sio chochote kingine. Na sio chochote kingine. Isipokuwa ukweli. Isipokuwa ukweli. Respondent. Shahidi Shahidi Ebu yeleze mahakama Una Fanya kazi gani Mimi ni mtumishu wa serikali Katika wizara ya mambu wa ndani anchi Idara ya uamiyaji Una elimu gani? Mimi na elimu ya degree ya kwanza ya ya sheria. Ukiwa kama mfanyakazi wa uhamiaji kwenye wizara ya mambo ya ndani, kazi zako za kila siku ni zipi? Mimi cheo changu ni mrakibu, msaidizi wa uhamiaji ASI. Na kazi yangu mimi ni mwanasheria wa idara ya uhamiaji kwa sasa hivi mkoa wa Dar es Salaam na pia ni mwendesha mashtaka wa idara. Mm. Una uzoefu gani au miaka mingapi kwenye hiyo kazi? Kazi nimeanza kufanya mwaka 2005 mpaka sasa hivi. Kwa hiyo ni kama miaka 12. Mm. Kwa hiyo kwa sasa hivi umesema uko kituo gani chako cha kazi ni, kit, ni kituo gani? Sasa hivi niko kituo cha mkoa wa Dar es Salaam kuendesha mashtaka katika mahakama ya Kisutu. Kabla ya hapo ulikuwa wapi? Kabla hapo nilikuwa airport kwa muda wa mwaka mmoja na kuanzia 2005 mpaka 2015 mwishoni nilikuwa niko mkoa wa Kagera katika wilaya ya Bukoba. Uh, una kubukubu zote kuhusiana na kesi namba 35 2010 ambayo mtu ambaye anaitwa John Robert alishtakiwa na, na jamhuri ndio nazo kumbukumbu. Katika kesi hiyo wewe ulishiriki kama nani? Kwa kipindi hicho nilikuwa kama mwanasheria wa idara wa miaji mkoa wa Kagera na pia mwendesha mashtaka wa idara nilikuwa kama mwendesha mashtaka katika shauri hilo zima katika mahakama ya Bukoba hakimu mkazi kwa hiyo ni wakati gani ulilifahamu uli swala la la huyu applicant yani Robert John Genesis? Mm, kwangu kuja ofisini kwangu ilikuwa ni mwaka ni mapema mwaka 2010 ambapo baada ya kitengo cha upelezi kukamilisha majukumu yao walileta jarada kwangu kwa ajili ya opinion ambapo ndio niliweza kufahamu jina la huyo mtu anayeitwa John Doe ina jarada lilivoletwa kwako lilikuwa na mambo gani au kulikuwa na ishu gani ambayo mpaka imefanyika uhamiaji wakafanya uchunguzi na kuleta jarada kwako ni kwamba kulikuwa na raia wa kigeni ambaye kwa kipindi cha nyuma alikuwa ameomba kibali cha ukaazi resident permit. Alafu ukapita muda ambapo haku, hakufuatilia yale maombi yake kwamba haku, hakuendelea kufuatilia ile permit yake. Hivyo upande wa upelelezi walipofanya upelelezi wakagundua bado yule mtu uko nchini. Walipomoji waligundua kwamba anaishi nchini isivyo halali. Kwa hiyo alipofika kwangu na mimi nilipoangalia jarada nikaona kwamba kweli huyu mtumiwa anaishi nchini Tanzania isivyo halali akiwa sio raia wa Tanzania. Hivyo tukamfungulia mashtaka. Ambapo mashtaka tuliyofungulia ilikuwa ni kuishi nchini kinyume cha sheria. 
Sasa kwa mujibu wa jarada hilo uraia huwa huyu John Robert Penesis ulionekanaje? Kwa mujibu wa jarada ni kwamba yeye alikuwa ni ana uraia wa South Africa na alikuwa ameingia nchini kwa kutumia passport hiyo. Lakini vile vile alikuwa na uraia wa Uingereza. Na alifanya application ya kualalisha ukazi wake nchini kwa kuomba kibali cha ukazi kama raia wa Uingereza ambapo katika maombi hayo alikiri kwamba yeye ni raia wa Uingereza na wazazi wake ni raia sio raia wa Tanzania ambapo katika kiapo hicho alisema mama yake alikuwa anaitwa Anastasia na baba yake alikuwa anaitwa John Penesis kwa hiyo baada ya ku baini hayo ndio tuka tukaangalia passport zake kwa wakati huo vibali vyake vya kuishi nchini yani visa yake ilikuwa imesha kuisha wakati hivyo tukamfikisha mahakamani kwa kosa la kuishi nchini sivyo alaa kwa hiyo unasema kwenye maombi yake ya kuomba kibali cha kuishi nchini alikuwa ameambatanisha passport ya nchi gani katika maombi yao pamoja na hiyo hicho kiapo alichokuwa ameambatanisha pia aliambatanisha certified copies za passport yake ya South Africa ambayo ilikuwa inamuonesha kwamba yeye ni raia wa South Africa kwa hiyo alikuwa anaomba passport hiyo pamoja na kiapo kingine cha I mean, pamoja na passport nyingine ya Uingereza ambazo zote zilikuwa ni certified copies na kwa kesi hiyo hiyo ya jinai namba 65 Ah, uh, umeshtakiwa alikuwa anawakilishwa na wakili gani? Umeshtakiwa alikuwa anawakilishwa kwa kipindi chote na wakili msomi alikuwa anaitwa Matthias Roemambo. Uh -huh. Na hizo nasema hiyo kopi ya passport hiyo ya, ya Afrika Kusini ambayo yeye ndo aliyapatanisha kwenye maombi yake ya, ya kuomba kibali ilikuwa ilikuwa imekuwa certified na nani? Vilikuwa vimekuwa certified na wakili Matias Remamo ambaye ndo kwa kipindi hicho pia alikuwa anamrepresent mahakamani. Uh -huh. Na kwa mujibu wa, wa sheria ya Tanzania commissioner wa Kiapo kwa sababu yeye wakili ni commissioner wa Kiapo ndio anapo certify document yani nakala kuna inatakiwa ajirizishe na kitu gani awe awe na kitu gani kabla haja certify kwamba ameona the true origi, the original copy ameiona. Ameona nini? The true copy of the original. Kwa maana hiyo kwa kitendo cha huyo wakili Matias Roemamo kusatifai na kala ya passport ya Afrika Kusini ya mshtakiwa ilikuwa imeanamaanisha kwamba ameona original ya kitu gani ya huyo mshtakiwa ilikuwa inamaanisha kwamba alikuwa ameona passport halisi au true copy of original copy ya passport zile ambazo kopi zake zililetwa pale ma, ma, zililetwa zili, zili pale katika idara ya uhamiaji sasa original ya hiyo passport iko wapi kwa sasa? Kwa kipindi kile tuli baada sasa ya kutofuatilia permit zake kwa sababu wakati anafanya application ya permit ndio alileta zile certified copies of the original kwa sababu alitakiwa aendelee kubaki na passport zake original. Alivyo acha kurudi sasa kufuatilia maombi yake na baada ya kukamatwa sasa kwamba anaishi nchini kinyume cha sheria tulimuoji na kumuuliza passport zake ziko wapi? alitujibu kwamba passport hizo amezirudisha katika balozi husika kwa sababu yeye ni raia wa Tanzania. Kwa hiyo kwa kipindi hicho hakuwa nazo yeye. Amezirudisha katika balozi husika na passport hizo. Na baada ya kumuuliza hivyo tukamuuliza tutathibitisha vipi kama kweli wewe ulizirudisha passport hizo katika balozi husika? Kuna, unayo acknowledgement receipt kwa sababu kuna utaratibu kama huo ukirudisha passport au resident permit au pass yoyote zile unapewa acknowledgement receipt lakini alisema kwamba hakupewa kwa minajili hiyo sisi ikawa ni shida sasa kuweza kufuatilia tulijaribu kufuatilia lakini kwa sababu tulikuwa hatuna reference yoyote yeye kupeleka kule tukashindwa kujua originals kwa wapi kwa hiyo tukaamini bado alikuwa anazificha kwa nia ya ku dangalia kwamba yeye ni raia wa Tanzania. Na unakumbuka kwenye hiyo kesi ya, ya jinai namba 65 2010 mshtakiwa alileta mashahidi wote wa kwenye defense yake. 
baada ya upande wa mashtaka kukamilisha upelelezi kesi yao mtakiwa alisema ali kwamba atakuwa na mashahidi watatu ye akiwa ni mmoja hapo hivyo ye mwenyewe pamoja na mashahidi wengine wawili ambapo mashahidi pamoja na ye au mashahidi wengine siwezi nikakumbuka vizuri majina ila mmoja alikuwa ni ali, ali kwamba ni rafiki yake na mwingine huyo wa pili alisema ni dereva taxi kulikuwa na ndugu yake yote wa damu ambaye alikuja mahakamani kumtolea ushahidi hapana hakuna shahidi yote alikuja ambaye ni ndugu mshahidi maana naomba ni, ni refresh shahidi kwenye ile hukumu na proceedings ya kwenye kesi namba 65 ya 2010 ambayo yeye ndo alikuwa ameiendesha kuna maswali nataka kumuuliza kulingana na hizo document mbili proceedings na hukumu Shahidi umeziona um, um, hizo dokumenti ambazo uko nazo sasa hivi umekabidhiwa? Ndio ziko mbele yangu. Ni dokumenti za aina gani? Moja ni proceedings ya criminal case number 35 na 10 na nyingine ni judgment ya hiyo hiyo criminal case 35/2010. Kwenye hizo hukumu na proceedings majina ya mshtakiwa yameandikwaje? au kuna majina mangapi ya mshtakiwa na naomba uisomee mahakama. Kwenye hii ya uh, proceedings inasoma ni criminal case number 35 Republic versus John son of Robert Penesis also known as Robert John Maitland also known as Robert John Rubinstein. Je, yeah. uh, mshtakiwa pamoja na wakili wake kwa sababu alikuwa anawakilishwa kama ulivyosema na wakili Matthias Royamam aliwahi kuweka pingamizi zote la hayo majina kwamba jina la moja hapo katika hayo sio la kwake hapana kwa hiyo hakuwahi hakuwahi kuleta pingamizi zote kuhusiana na majina hayo sasa baada ya mahakama kusikiliza pande zote mbili ilitoa maamuzi gani katika hii kesi namba 35 ni kwamba mwisho wa siku mahakama ilibaini kwamba mtuhumiwa ni kweli alikuwa akiishi nchini isivyo halali na alihukumiwa kulipa fine kutoka kama sikoseni fine ya hela za kitanzania shilingi 1080 na kifungo sina kumbuku vizuri lakini nadhani ni miaka miwili tu kama hicho baada ya hukumu hiyo mshtakiwa alichukua hatua gani baada ya hukumu hiyo mshtakiwa alikata rufaa kwa sababu baada ya hukumu alisomewa haki zake za rufaa na alitumia haki yake hiyo akakata rufaa ambapo alikata rufaa katika mahakama ya mahakama kuu Bukoko. Na taarifa zozote maamuzi ya mahakama kuu ya rufaa hiyo yalikwaje? Ndio kwa sababu niliendelea kufuatilia hiyo kesi ni kwamba apili yake ilikuwa dismissed. Yaani hakushinda ha, 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 ile alishindwa ile ile apili kwenye high court. Baada ya kushindwa mahakama kuu alichukua hatua gani? Aliendelea kutumia haki yake akakata rufaa ambapo alikata rufaa katika mahakama ya rufaa Mwanza kwa kipindi kile bukoba bado kutoka pili nadhani ilikuwa bado na maamuzi hayo ya, ya mahakama ya rufaa yalikuwaje wali sustain ya high court ambapo nayo pia ilionekana kweli maamuzi ya mahakama mbili za mwanzo yalikuwa ni sawa hivyo basi aliambiwa kwamba alikuwa akiishi nchini sivyo kialali kwa hiyo mahakama kuu mahakama ya rufaa unasema ili ilitoa maamuzi gani? Mahakama ya rufaa ilikubaliana na maamuzi ya mahakama mbili za mwanzo ambapo walikubaliana kwamba mshtakiwa akiwa sio raia wa Tanzania alibainika kwamba anaishi nchini isivyo halali. Kwa hiyo kwa utaratibu kama mtu ameshathibitika sio raia na anaishi kinyume cha sheria na mahakama ya juu kabisa ya nchi kitu ambacho kinatakiwa kifuate ni nini kwa mujibu wa taratibu za uhamiaji 
kwa mujibu wa uh, taratibu zetu ni kwamba mtu akishabainika anaishi nchini sivyo halali anakuwa deported kurudi katika nchi yake ya asili asante mheshimiwa jaji huo ndio mwisho wa kwa sasa eh last question ah you have finished okay thank you thank you very much applicant Thank you, Honorable President and Honorable Justices. Shahidi, Msomi. No. Uh, umeka mleba, ulikuwa immigration of some labor. Papa. Ulikuwa wapi? Ulikuwa immigration office office zangu ilikuwa situated Bukoba lakini nilikuwa mwanasheria wa mkoa wa Kagera sawa so, sawa so. <coughs> bila shaka unamjua mtu anaitwa Marino Constaki Constaki hapa na labda nikukumbushe vizuri kwamba katika mimi najili gani namfahamu hakuna una mulishe kutana tu siku moja na mtu anaitwa Marino Costaki sina kumbukumbu una kumbukumbu ulishe kusikia mtu yeyote anaitwa Marino Costaki ukiwa immigration officer lazima una scope kubwa ya kuweza kujua baadhi ya watu majina hayo ya bado kichwa ni kwangu haya bado kichwa ni kwangu haya Shahidi ulisha hii kusikia hata siku moja kwa Kiswahili kitu inaitwa majina ya utani. Ndio. Kwa hiyo nikisema kwamba majina mengine hayo ambayo umeyataja ukiongozwa na wakili msomi hapa ni majina ya utani na ndio maana imeitwa imeikwa allies. Unasemaje? Sio kweli. Shahidi wewe ni immigration officer. Je, una uwezo wa obtain passport ya mtu ambaye unajua yupo injini kinyume cha sheria? Ku obtain una maanisha uh, kuichukua. Una uwezo huo kwa mamlaka ulionayo. Kuichukua kwa sababu gani si kweli? kuichukua labda kwa investigation ndio shahidi ulisha kuchukua passport hizo unazo nai tatu za Robert eh, John Pedersen kwa eh, Pensis kwa ajili ya kufanyia uchunguzi hapa shahidi kama ume umekuwa na tashwishi umekuwa ume suspect kwamba hizo passport labda huyu mtu anaishi Tanzania kinyume cha sheria na passport nyingi ni nini kilichokunyima kuweza kuchukua hizo hizo eh, eh, passport ili kuweza kufanyia uchunguzi wa origin zake origin zake hakuna wakati ambapo tulimsuspect kwamba anaishi nchini kinyume cha sheria kwa passport nyingi shahidi ni sawa ulipoiambia mahakama kwamba applicant ameshtakiwa kwa kosa la kuzidisha muda aliopewa kuishi Tanzania yani resident permit aliopewa unakumbuka kuiambia mahakama hivi hapana unakumbuka kusema kwamba alikuwa ana apply kwa ajili ya muda wake kupita muda amekaa amekaa ame muda zaidi hapana shahidi record za mahakama zikionyesha kwamba ulisema kwamba alikamatwa kwa kuzidisha muda wa kuishi Tanzania utakuwa umedanganya mahakama 
nimesema alikamatwa kwa kosa la kuishi nchini kinyume cha sheria na ni sawa muda wake wa kuishi ulikuwa umeisha hivyo amezidisha muda kwa hiyo alikuwa anaishi kialali kwa mjibu wako lakini muda uka expire kweli si kweli hapana sio kweli alikuwa haishi kihalali yani anaishi isivyo halali ndio maana akakamatwa shahidi una jaji mendulio pewa na wakili msoni saidi ndio yeah. shahidi naomba usome kuanzia paragraph ya pili sehemu inaoanza here in after page ngapi sasa page ya kwanza paragraph ya pili ya yeah. sehemu inaoanza rube stay here in after anza kwenye here in after Judgment. Yeah, judgment. Paragraph ya pili. Yes. Mstari wa ngapi labda? Nasema mstari anza John Rob, Robert alafu ndio mstari wa pili. Inaona hapa kuna kuna paragraph umesema second paragraph right? Yes. Sasa hapo kwenye John Robert ndio wapi si uniambie tu ni mstari wa ngapi? Bas anza kuanzia palipo alikuwa John Robert. Isome. Sasa hiyo ni paragraph ya kwanza. Yes, paragraph ya kwanza. Kwa sema Okay. Kwa hiyo nisome kwanza. Shahidi, soma. John Robert Penesis, alias Robert John Madland, alias Robert John Rubenstein. Here and after referred to as the accused person who was charged with the offense of unlawful entering and presence in the United Republic of Tanzania, contrary to section 31 subsection 1i and 2 of the Immigration Act number 7 of 1995. Hapo, mpaka hapo. Shahidi hebu soma hapo hebu iangalie vizuri hapo inaposema offense of unlawfully entering and in presence in the United Republic of Tanzania na uliosema kwamba kwa kuwepo Tanzania hebu itafsiri kuwepo Tanzania na entry entry kwa, ki, kwa Kiswahili tafsiri entry kwa Kiswahili ina maana gani kuingia kuingia na uliposema kuishi ni neno moja na kuingia hapana sio neno moja na kuingia shahidi kwa hiyo ni sawa nikikwambia kwamba haya unayosema hapo mahakamani ni kitu ambacho hata wewe mwenyewe uielewe ama unaidanganya mahakama kwa sababu judgment inasema unlawfully entered na wewe unasema kwa kuwepo Tanzania kinyume cha sheria. Okay, kama ungekuwa mfanyari set yako vizuri ili jambo limekuwa address high court na hichi kifungu cha sheria kinasoma ni kifungu kimoja unlawful entry na presence. Sisi hatukumwambia entering yake ilikuwa unlawful. Hata ukisoma proceedings ukisoma ushahidi sio entry sema kifungu kinasoma hivi sisi lakini tulibase kwenye presence na high court ili rule kwamba ili inaweza ikawa two separate offenses kwamba inaweza entry ikawa an offense na presence, na presence ikawa an offense na ndio maana sisi katika ushahidi wetu hatukusema kwamba aliingia unlawfully tulisema alikuwepo present unlawfully mimi sitaki kujua mlioingia mimi sijauliza nyinyi kwa wingi mimi nimekuuliza wewe unao testify on off kwamba amekamatwa kwa kuishi Tanzania na hapa kwenye judgment this is a document of the court inasema unlawfully enter in entering sasa kati yako na mahakama nani anayesema ukweli kifungu cha sheria kinasema unlawful entering and presence kwa sababu sio mimi nakuuliza shahidi mimi nakuuliza wewe tena ni wakili pia Objection on Rapid Judge. Uh, the witness has already responded. We don't know what kind of response he wants from the witness because he has already responded several times and he keeps on asking the same question for the sake of time. I think he can change the question if he doesn't have any other question. Pray. Okay. But since he has a uh, 15 minutes and he want to ask uh, the same question. So 
Yeah, 15 hey. now is uh, two minutes. So I think two or three minutes. Is it okay? Shady. Umesema eh, applicant ali alikuwa na passport ya South Africa kweli si kweli ni kweli na ali, ali, akitumia passport ya South Africa alikuwa anaomba residence permit kweli si kweli alikuwa anaomba residence permit swali ni hivi kuna shida gani kuwa mtu anaye hold passport ya nchi ambayo sio host ya Tanzania kuomba residence permit hamna kosa hamna shida yote sasa kama shahidi huyo 2 minutes ah, thank, you. thank you kama hakuna shida ya mtu kuomba residence ya eh, kuishi kwa passport ya inchi ambao na alleged kwamba ametoka sasa ni shida gani ku e, kumkamata badala ya kumnyima tu residence permit Hebu rudi hero sana Nauliza kama mtu ameingia Tanzania akiwa na passport ya inchi yake kama unavyo alleged na anaomba residence permit anakosa gani la kuomba residence permit mpaka akamatwe badala ya kunyimwa permit na kuambiwa rudi kwenu hakunyimwa permit ni kwamba hakufuatilia zaidi kuhusiana na permit yake na baada ya kutofuatilia permit yake muda wake wa kuishi nchini ukawa umeisha kwenye visa aliyokuwa nayo hivyo presence yake sasa ilikuwa lawful aliingia lawful presence ilikuwa lawful and then if we expire muda wake wa kuishi ndio akawa unlawful present na ndo hapo akawa arrested na kuwa charged accordingly mtu ambaye si mtanzania ni lazima kuwe na procedure wakati ana passport ya inchi yake mpaka tena u apply kwenye inchi yake ili arudishwe hmm? raia mfano hmm. raia wa Kenya raia wa Kenya ndio kama ana ana passport ya Kenya na hatakiwi Tanzania. Je, ni lazima tena uombe Kenya arudishwe huyo raia Kenya? Kama yeye mwenyewe anakiri kwamba ni raia wa ile nchi, tunamrudisha tunafuata procedure border tunamkabidhi. Lakini kama atakataa, lazima tufanye correspondence ili tuone yule mtu kwa sababu unaweza ukamfikisha mtu hadi border alafu bado anakataa na asipokelee katika nchi usiku. No further questions. Okay, thank you very much. Respondent. Asante Shaibi. Uh, Samahani naomba ni, ni muonyeshe Shaibi hii nakala ya passport ya Afrika Kusini. I move to object because that is now an examination in chief. He should have shown before. Yes. And uh, 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 re-examination is only to correct yes. where I have done it. I don't think I have done it, that yes. certificate. You are right. So what do you propose? Asante, mwishu, uh, wakili msobi kwa, kwa objeshini yako. Lakini objeshini yako wa hida msingi wa kishiria. Kwa sababu gani nasema hivyo? kwa sababu kwenye wakati Adam Cross shahidi amesema amezungumzia kuhusu majina kwamba mtu anaweza kaweka majina ya utani kwenye wakati anachajiwa pale kulikuwa na majina mengi ambao ni matatu kama alivyosoma shahidi sasa mimi lengo langu nataka kumuonyesha kwamba je kwenye document series kama document ya passport mtu anaweza kaweka majina ya utani lengo langu likuwa ni hiyo kwa hiyo swali langu ni result ya cross examination yake kwa hiyo ni sahihi kabisa kumuonyesha shahidi 
Just proceed. I will give him the floor after you about that. Kwa hiyo sasa nataka niendelee kumuuliza kutokana na hilo. Naruhusiwa wao Shahidi ukiangalia na kala ya passport ambayo imekuwa certified na wa, na wakili wa accused kwenye kesi hiyo namba 35 ya 2010 jina ambalo lina pia hapo ni jina gani ambalo linamuonyesha holder wa hiyo passport hapa inatokea jina kwenye surname ni Rubenstein given names ni Robert John ah, na kwenye naomba ikumbushe tena mahakama kwenye zile charge kwenye proceedings na kwenye hukumu majina ambayo yana pia ni majina gani kuna John Robert Penesis, Robert John Maitland na Robert John Rubenstein. Asante Shadi. Kwa hiyo kwenye document series kama passport mtu anaweza akaweka jina lake la utani? Hapana. Asante Shahidi. Uh, issue nyingine ni, ni, ni kuhusu qualification ya makosa ambayo alikuwa ameshajiwa. Naomba ikumbushe tena mahakama alikuwa amechajiwa kwa makosa gani na yeye alihukumiwa kwa kosa gani? Alichajiwa kwa makosa gani na alihukumiwa na mahakama kwa kosa gani? Alishtakiwa al, al, kwa kosa la kuingia na kuishi nchini kinyume cha kama section inavyosoma ni kuingia na kuishi nchini kinyume cha sheria. Kinyume cha kifungu cha 31 kifungu kidogo cha kwanza i cha sheria ya uhamiaji lakini kwa upande wa mashtaka sisi tulikuwa tunamshtaki kwa kosa kwa kosa la presence peke yake sio entering. Asante Shahidi. Na mtu anapoingia Tanzania ni document gani ambazo anaingia nazo Tanzania? Mgeni ambaye sio mtanzania ya. Ni passport alafu anapewa visa hapo ndio. Unasoma unaposema visa unamaanisha nini? Hebu ielezee mahakama. Visa ni labda ni ni, ni, ni kibali kinachomruhusu kuishi nchini hapa kama ni holiday au ni business au another part na kwa kawaida kitakuwa cha muda gani hiyo visa inakuwa ya muda gani siku tisini maximum kwa kalenda hiyo kwa hiyo akipewa kwa mfano muda wa kuishi Tanzania siku tisini zikisha hizo siku tisini atakiwa afanye nini sio lazima apewe tisini anaweza akapewa siku mbili siku tatu maximum tisini kwa hiyo so zile ambazo atakuwa amepewa ziko stamp pale zikiisha kama ana opportunity ya kufanya extension anafanya extension kama zile 90 zimeisha kabisa inabidi aondoke hiyo extension itakuwa ifanye wapi kwenye ofisi za uhamiaji na aspo aspo maombi aspo maombi aspo maombi extension then anakuwa presence yake Tanzania inakuwa ndofu na kwa kesi hii huyu baada ya kuleta maombi yake ya kuomba hiyo resident permit aliyafuatilia hakuyafuatilia kwa kipindi kirefu na ndo maana timu ya upelelezi katika kupitia majarada mbalimbali mbali ofisini walibaini kwamba huyu mtu hajarudi na muda wake ambao ulikuwaepo kwenye passport kwa kipindi kile ulikuwa umeisha hivyo waka, waka mtafuta na kumfanya arrest sasa ukiwa kama afisa wa serikali mtu ambaye muda wake wa kuishi kwenye kibali umeisha ofisi usika nitakiwa ifanye nini ndo kama hizo nzokuambia kwamba ata kama yuko bado nchini atakamata na kuwa charged kwa kosa la kuishi nchini unlawfully and that means unlawful presence uh, so la, la, la mwisho umesema kwamba resident permit inatolewa kwa mgeni je kwa mtu ambaye ni, ni Tanzania anaweza kuomba kibari cha kuishi au resident permit Tanzania mtu ambaye tayari ni Tanzania hapana asante Thank you very much. Uh, I have no further question. Thank you very much. Okay, I think we are going to change the program instead of uh, uh, resuming. Uh, okay, I will. I will uh, give the floor first to the judges and after that uh, i think we will uh, suspend the the hearing for tomorrow dear colleagues do you have some questions yes this what you say
Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, good afternoon. Good evening, I would say. Uh, I have a um, couple of questions for you. First, uh, are you aware of the fact that uh, the applicant had or has a birth certificate? Which birth certificate? Do you know what a birth certificate is? At all? Yeah, I know. And what I'm asking is whether you know or not that the applicant has a birth certificate. Yes, he produced one during the proceedings in lower courts. You have identified yourself as a prosecutor. Yes. Correct. Would you please tell me, is a forgery a criminal offense in Tanzania? Yes, it is, Your Honor. Has it ever been brought to your attention that the birth certificate produced by this applicant was a forged document? Yes, it has. What did you do about it? Were you not supposed to also prosecute him for forgery? My capacity as a prosecutor, I only prosecute matters regarding immigration laws. That was a matter of a state attorney, the police. I only deal with the Immigration Act. So I cannot proceed further to proceed other offenses which are not under the Immigration Act. That offense is under the penal code. Interpretation. Interpretation in English. same person and he has never at any point countered that he is not the same person. So we, we didn't see any need because there wasn't a point where he challenged us and said that he is not Robert Madland or is not because all the all these names we found them from his passports. The the, the three names are all from different passports and since other countries allow dual citizenship, then we didn't see it as a problem because he never brought it up as a problem. Justice Benachou. Bon, euh, ah oui, allez-y, allez-y, pardon. Ma question concerne les conditions de détention. Est-ce que cette personne qui est en détention juste parce que l'expulsion n'a pas été exécutée, Est-ce qu'elle se retrouve avec des délinquants, des, des condamnés, euh, ou elle est quelque part où c'est purement administratif comme détention Merci, M. le Président. Are you asking me where he's been kept while in detention Bon, vous me donnerez un nom, je, je, je ne connais pas. Je, je ne connaîtrai pas, mais ce que je veux, c'est les conditions. Est-ce qu'il est détenu comme un condamné, comme les condamnés, comme les, les, les prévenus, comme ceux qui sont poursuivis, ou il est mis quelque part en détention, mais c'est simplement administratif Parce que le problème qui se pose là, c'est que euh, l'ordonnance d'expulsion n'a pas été exécutée. 
Et comme j'avais posé la question à un autre témoin, jusqu'à quand ça va durer cette détention Donc les conditions, est-ce que c'est dans une prison où se trouvent les condamnés, ou les, 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 ceux qui sont en procédure, ou c'est juste un, un endroit spécial pour les cas purement administratifs qui n'ont rien de, de condamné The way I understand it is in detention in a prison. The prison authorities have their own ways of keeping the detainees, prisoners, and those who are in remand. Now, that one I cannot answer you directly, but the way I understand is that the prison authorities, they know where to keep the detainee, where to keep a prisoner, and where to keep a remand. Okay, Justice uh, Shizumila. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Um, you did. It's on. It's on. Yeah. You did inform the court. No, but perhaps it's the interpretation there because the, the microphone is on. Should I try? Yeah, both of them are on. The two of them. It is on, but maybe it's not working. But it's on. It was on. Thank you. Um, I was saying that um, you have informed the court that uh, you were prosecutor for Bukoba, right? And that in early 2010, you received a file from the CID uh, for an opinion concerning this applicant. Sorry. Excuse me. Yes, Your Honor. Let me the, the microphone of the judge. Change the microphone of the judge. Thank you. I will repeat the question. You said um, you were prosecutor for Bukoba. You said yes. And in early 2010, you received a file from the CID for, for an opinion on uh, the applicant. Yes, sir. Now, I would just like to find out from you that um, from what you also have stated, you said Roy Mamu, a Mr. Roy Mamu. Yes. Was uh, both the one who certified that he saw the original passports Yes, and sir. this is the British and South African passport. Yes, and that he was also the lawyer for the applicant. Yes, you are. Now, these passports are the one you have said that the applicant indicated that he returned them to the embassies, the two embassies. Yes, sir. And you have said you could not get further information on those passports yes sir. my question is why first of all he he is the one who claimed that he had returned the passport to the embassies and the way i understand it when uh, in my work is when you return your passport to uh, to your embassy they usually give you an acknowledgement receipt so I expected Mr. Maitland to, to produce that to us. But we did not end there. He did not produce that. But we did not end there. We went further by communicating through the Foreign Affairs Ministry to see if any of these purposes were, were, were ever returned to the said embassies. But to no avail there, we did not get any confirmation that, that the passports were ever returned to, to the state embassies. I will proceed on 
this question. You did indicate that, um, correct me if I'm wrong, that you could not get any information on these passports because you did not even have any um, details of these passports. Not, de not, not details, mm -hmm. confirmation that they were ever returned to, that, to uh -huh. those embassies. Okay. Now, could you not have used the CID? And please, madam, when I said the investigation department, I'm not talking about the CID because the CID is with the police. I'm talking about the investigation department for immigration. Aha, uh -huh. okay, thank you. So those are the ones who gave you that file for opinion? They're the ones who arrested, they're the ones who investigated, and then they're the ones who brought the case to the, the, the file to me. All right, thank you. Um, I think those were my questions. The other one you have answered it already. Thank, thank you. you madam. Justice Benashu. Merci, Monsieur le Président. J'ai trois questions à adresser aux témoins. Je voudrais qu'elles répondent de manière très succincte. Premièrement, comment est-ce que cette personne est entrée en Tanzanie de manière illégale alors même que vous dites, vous et tous les autres, qu'il avait un visa d'entrée régulier en Tanzanie. He entered legally. He entered in Tanzania legally. His entry to Tanzania was legal. Alors, s'il est entré en Tanzanie de manière légale, pourquoi il est poursuivi pour entrer illégal en Tanzanie I have already mentioned here when I was giving up my, uh, my, my evidence that the section of the law under the Immigration Act reads, that's section 31.1, unlawful entry and presence. That's how the section reads. But it gives us the venue to prosecute because one can enter lawfully but yet the presence can be unlawful. So. In this case, we only prosecuted upon his presence, not entry. Even if you go look at the judgments and everything, only his, entry, his presence was the one which was being challenged. There was no point that he was told that he, he entered unlawfully. You have been pursued for two things, entry illegal and residence illegal. Well, I pass to the second question. Pourquoi sa résidence a-t-elle été estimée illégale Because at the time of the arrest, his visa had already expired and he had no any other document authorizing him to be in Tanzania. Ok, troisième question. Voilà une personne qui a plusieurs passeports Et sur chaque passeport, il y a un nom différent. Est-ce que cela n'a pas éveillé en vous des craintes très sérieuses Pourquoi vous n'avez pas, dans ce cas, par exemple, saisi les instances internationales comme Interpol, etc., pour vous assurer de l'identité de la personne We just didn't do it by that time. We could have done it, but we didn't. You don't estimate that someone who has three names different can be in an extreme danger. It can be a terrorist. It can be someone who does 
du blanchiment d'argent, ça peut être quelqu'un qui veut échapper à la justice dans un pays, etc. Comme ça, vous, vous passez. Okay. What triggers does not to, 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 to proceed with the names is the first fact that he never challenged that he, they are all of the same person. But also, there was a document which, although was not admitted to court, that he had gone to a South African embassy at one point of his time to change from among these two names from one name to another. So he had like a, a deep pole of South Africa. It, it never at any point was admitted to court, but he had it. So we assume that it was not a problem so far. But he, he, he made an, offer, an effort to change his name. So we took all the names so that we may not leave any loophole behind. <coughs> Okay. Yeah. Justice Niyugeko. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Just a follow-up question on uh, one of the previous questions. Uh, in the copy of the passport, South African one you have, uh, is that copy showing a visa, an entry visa to Tanzania? This is the biodata page. So there's no place for visa here. Maybe you can give me the other papers because it wasn't just this one. Sorry? This is a biodata page. So there's no place for a visa here. No, but uh, so how, how have you been able to establish the period which you said expired if you don't have a copy of the page of the passport which indicates the duration of the visa. In the lower courts, these were attended as exhibits. And it was not just this, it was several pages. We, he, we, we had copies of, uh, of his passport, not only the biodata page. We produced in court as an exhibit this biodata page and other pages. I don't know where they are right now, but we tendered them as co in court and they were admitted. And in those copies, they showed the visa of the, uh, the applicant. So is, is it possible for the respondent to tender also these pages indicating uh, the visa, the entry visa, uh, to show what was the period uh, accorded and uh, when it did expire? Is it possible? Yes. Uh, uh, yes, it is possible, but also it's part of the records of, of those three judgments, uh, which are already form part of the records. Uh, the records our, before our court? Uh, yes, it, it is possible. We can you say it is already in the record? The records before this court? Or? The, the records before this court, uh, we submitted copies of the judgments of the national courts. No, I'm, not, that I'm not talking about the judgment, the relevant photocopies. Uh, they, the can, they can be, they can be uh, okay. presented before we the court. We would appreciate her. Yes, we will do. Thank you. We'll do. Thank you, Vice President. Yeah, I, I, I have a few short questions, and um, if you give short answers, I think we can uh, quickly go over this. When I look at the charge sheet, I see that um, the names given, alias this, alias that, the name Pendasis does not appear. The name Pendasis does not appear among the aliases. I don't have the chat sheet with me as well. No, no, but you read it. You were given the document and you read it. Or was it the other? It was the proceedings, which okay. shows the name of John Robert Pendasis. Yes, alias, alias, this Robert alias. Robert John Mikeland and Robert Rubinstein. Yes, Pendasis is not there. Which name is not there? Pendasis, Pendasis. I don't know Pendasis, I only okay. know Penesis. Okay, okay, very well. Yeah. Pendasis was one of the names. Okay, the other issue I wanted to raise with you is um, at the time of his arrest, Yes. Sir. Uh, where, was he, where was he living? 
I was not the arresting officer. You're not investigating officer, okay. The other issue I would like to raise with you is that, um, and I think as a lawyer working on immigration, you know that under the Vienna, Vienna Convention on Consular Relations, when you arrest a national of another state, you are supposed to report to that other state that we have arrested your national, and maybe in the course of, um, with that report, they would have been able to assist you with investigations, and I'm thinking of South Africa and uh, Britain and UK, they would have assisted you. And maybe you would also have learned actually that, uh, unlike what is indicated in the document, South Africa does, does not allow dual citizenship. But if the Vienna Convention had been implemented by formally reporting to them, I think they would have assisted you in um, investigating who this person really is. And as my colleague, Judge Benashu said, whether indeed he's a terrorist. So do you know whether that report, formal report, was made to the South African Embassy and the British Embassy? Mm. <coughs> Thank you. Um, uh, not so much aware of the Vienna Convention, as you're mentioning. I don't know much about it, but what I know as an immigration officer, I'm not obliged at any moment when I arrest a foreigner to go report to his embassy. I'm not, at a, by, unless you tell me about the Vienna Convention, no, but you're in not our obliged. national laws, I'm not obliged to do that. We arrest guys from Kenya, Rwanda, every time, every day. A lot of people. We do not do that. Because if we are doing that for every foreigner we arrest here, I think our work will be on the bill to okay, be important I'll, today. I will ask the question tomorrow so that you can now formally respond to it. Finally, uh, you say that this person applied for a resident permit, yes. but he never followed up. Yes. Was, was there a response sent to him? Because what you are suggesting is that once you apply, it's for you to follow up. You, don't, you yourself as immigration officer, you don't need to do anything. Yes. It's for the person to follow up. If it doesn't follow up, then you assume they are no longer interesting. interesting Sometimes yes. people apply for residence permits and then they leave the country before it comes out. Sometimes they apply for a resident permit and even before completing the application, they change their mind. So it's not our responsibility every time to call a person. You're not making a follow up on your permit, no. So we, we, we expect a, a, the applicant to come to immigration officer, not the immigration officer to, the, to go to the applicant. So first we assume maybe the guy has left the country or he has changed his intention to reside in Tanzania for a long period. Okay, was a response sent to him to say we have decided to grant... There was no response because the application was not completed. <laughs> okay, it was not completed. Yes. Monsieur le Président, très brièvement, je voudrais demander au témoin, à Monsieur le Procureur, chargé donc des poursuites, quelle est la sanction que vous appliquez quand vous trouvez quelqu'un en présence irrégulière dans votre pays? Uh, according, according to the laws by that time, we were applying the, uh, the Immigration Act. The, the Immigration Act number no. 7 of 1995, which stated that the punishment for unlawful presence was a fine not exceeding 100,000 Tanzanian shillings or not exceeding three years imprisonment. Currently, it has been amended under CAP 54, revised edition uh, 2016, whereby the punishment is now a minimum of 500,000 Tanzanian shillings and a, minimum, and, and a maximum of three years imprisonment. Oui, je veux en venir à vous poser une dernière question. Le, 
prévenu. Il est en détention depuis plus de six ans. Comment est-ce qu'on peut expliquer cette privation de liberté Vous avez dit tout à l'heure que la, la, loi, la durée maximum de la peine, c'est trois ans. Lui, il est actuellement en détention depuis six ans. Comment est-ce que vous pouvez expliquer cette présence en prison yeah. What I was speaking here is the, is the punishment for the offense of unlawful presence, according to Immigration Act. That is the maximum of three years. This guy paid the fine, the, the 80,000 Tanzanian shillings. So he was supposed to be deport, deported. So there was no jail time for him because he had already paid the fine. He was given an option of a fine. So he paid the fine. After that, he was supposed to be deported. He appealed to the High Court. To the court of appeal they all uh, withheld the, the the judgments of the lower courts so he was supposed to be deported back home so upon uh, uh, while we were working on deporting him that's when the detention comes in the detention is the order by the minister the way i understand it it's an order of a minister to keep this foreigner pending deportation now if he, I, I assume maybe if he had cooperated and agreed to leave the country, then it wouldn't take even a week. But he's not cooperating, that's why I think he's inside until now, because he's still pending deportation. She's Omila. I just want to find out from you how long does a resident permit take when one applies for it? Uh, it depends. Bukoba is somehow far from the, all the resi residence permits are produced in Dar es Salaam. So when one applies, normally it takes three weeks, a month. Maximum, I think. But it also depends on the situation. It can take a week, but a maximum of one, of one month. is very late so we have to we change the program so we are joined for today and we come back uh, tomorrow we will uh, see you at 10 we the judges will meet first at night and prepare the question to put uh, the the question to put uh, to you and uh, we have, of course you will be given time to to prepare your response and court we resume at, uh, I think, at four. At four. Yeah, I said that we resume at ten for you. At ten, we are here. Thank you.